Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're going to be playing some more Arkham Horror, the card game. We're playing through the path to Carcosa Cycle. This is episode 3. 3, we're playing episode 3, which is... I don't remember what this titled. I should be able to just... Oh, look right here. Yeah, Echoes of the Past. Echoes of the Past uh, is what we're playing today. Uh, thanks to all those on the last episode who voted on our deck upgrades and gave recommendations. We've upgraded the decks. The deck lists are down in the video description, currently updated. Uh, thank you everyone for doing that. And stay tuned at the end of the stream. When the stream is finished, the comment section will open. And you can recommend how we spend our experience and upgrade our decks as we play along and, or vote on you know, recommendations, that kind of thing. Uh, and we'll go over what our current deck changes are before we get into this one. Hello, everybody joining live. Hello, hello. Hello, welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> Doc says, well, there goes being, my being productive this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you knew this was happening. It was, was scheduled a week ago. No, I'm just uh, Oh, hello. All right. Okay, let's talk about our decks. Let's talk about our decks. Let's see here. So the simple changes, relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. Thank you to, uh, I guess, Bob for the, the ones that went on in both cases. Uh, so we are upgrading Mel's deck, uh, Akachi's deck here, with an upgraded Shriveling. That's, yes. uh, let's see, go here. So it uses, this costs three XP to upgrade it. So is your full XP. Yep. Uh, costs three to play it compared to the old shriveling cost three four charges four charges the old one had one fight icon this has a fight and a willpower see the old one is spend one charge to fight this attacks use willpower instead of fight deals plus one damage draw one of these awful awful tokens from the bag uh take a horror this one says spend one charge to fight this attack uses willpower instead of fight you get plus two willpower cool. mm -hmm. and deal plus one damage. Did that do that too? Plus one? Plus one damage, but not the extra. Yeah, the extra little willpower there. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. And then if you pull any of these crappy, super awful tokens, uh, you take a horror. Okay. I saw there's another shriveling like beyond this. Yeah, like, like a, a five, five XP one five or something. XP, but I haven't looked at what it does. So this is the only one you've upgraded so far. So you do still have one that's not so hot. Yeah. And then, and then one that's pretty hot yeah we're uh, fingers crossing for the hot one yeah yeah so you hope you draw that one first <laughs> yeah 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 exactly speaking of having one good and one bad card in the deck uh, or one okay card uh my upgrade is uh getting the second peter sylvester the upgraded version so i got rid of both of the okay peter sylvesters out of the deck now and now i'm, I'm playing with a uh full deck i don't i don't know no, i'm not really though but uh anyways peter sylvester is fully upgraded so now i have two copies of the better version in here so uh he has more takes more horror and uh as i think i think it's oh i get uh oh i get a willpower out of it a willpower and he can take an extra he has an extra sanity so it's, it's all, all good all around like those are the changes Those are the changes. That's what we're going with. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Cynthia's asking, are you feeling better today? Uh, like, I don't know, like 30% better maybe. Not all 100% yet. Not 100%, not, not back, no. But I am feeling better than yesterday, for sure. I am feeling better than yesterday, for sure. Uh, thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Uh, Doc says, Rob, are you planning on doing Barkham in the middle of this cycle while you're playing Pete? I haven't opened it to know if that is that like a thing. I, I was thinking on like putting that like that came out like a lot later than the cycle. I thought we'd put that in in a future cycle, but I think he's more saying because of Duke. Yeah, Barkham. I, I know. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I, Doc, I didn't look at it yet to know like when it, what's recommended. I don't know anything about it other than it's got the funny dog face on the front, and and I'm assuming based on some comments before uh, that it's I guess related to Duke. Um, but I don't, I don't know enough about it to know, like, is that how we should play it? Should it be involved in this scenario? Does it go good with Carcosa? I, I don't know. I also, just, I just thought it came out a lot later, so I, I just didn't really, it fits. Hmm. So people have to vote on it then, I guess, right? I, they have I, to suggest it. It would have to be a recommendation. So if yeah. you're watching this, uh, and you want to recommend 
spending experience to jump in. Uh, so we could put that one on the table. So again, Roguru then, Carnival, or whatever it's called. Investigators of Barkham Horror or something. I, I don't remember what it was called. Duke is an investigator? He, he is. I know. Uh, Ashcan Peach just is dog walker. Like, he's, he just babysits Duke. Duke's the real hero. Uh, just needs to, someone to hold his leash. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, we can. Yeah. So, um, I guess setup wise, though, we should probably before reading this, every time I think yeah. of let's read this, it makes sense to read it now. I uh, we were supposed to do something else before that. Yeah, I just noticed though that you don't have do or you don't have him set up your dog. Oh yeah, so maybe do that. That is what. I... So Good call. here, where is it? Uh, take the trauma and horror. I need to take one damage. I'll take one damage. You don't have any. Uh, choose lead investigator. I'm also, just gonna erase our XP spent. Guy there. The lead investigator it is you okay okay assemble the token pool uh shuffle the investigators decks assemble the chaos bag all done collect our resources and then we'll draw opening hand hey drazzy <laughs> Like it, people. Like it. <laughs> Click that button. Do it now. Do actually one. This. Yeah, stand. Don't all standalone scenarios. I see some discussion in the chat. Don't all standalone scenarios kind of have that mode where they can be worked into a campaign. By spending experience to go visit. We've only done one and we've only ever seen the uh, Curse of the Ruguru. Um, that's how that one worked. And there's talk about using uh, Carnival of Horrors or whatever in this cycle at some point. So I would assume all standalone scenarios are used that way, could be used that way. They don't have to be fully standalone. Oh, okay. Oh, not, it's not the same. Oh, the investigators are different. Oh, so then, yeah, you can't really work it in, right? Was well, an April Fool's joke that became real. Okay, so we, we should just do it as its own, like, episode then. Ah, Kate says, Barkham is different. You can't use the same investigators. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so it's, it's really its own thing. Really its own thing. Which was why I've seen when people, like, I've read about people collecting this, this collection of Arkham Horror stuff, and people, like, saying what's priority, what to get. And people always mention that one as, like, a standalone scenario you don't need at all. Like, don't even worry about it. Oh, that makes sense, though. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's why. Because it's like it's, it's really its own thing. Okay, interesting. Thank you, thank you. It's great. Thanks for bringing that up. How dare you, Doc? Trying to, trying to derail us here. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> but yeah, we'll play it at some point on the channel, for sure. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to check it out still. Dog investigators fighting cats. All right. All right, I'm in. Lay off with the spoilers. That's huge spoiler, all right? I'm in, I'm in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, keep the spoilers to a minimum. Scrape on the channel if you don't mind. Uh, but we would have figured that out by opening up the pack, I'm sure, and being like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we, when we're playing Arkham Horror through a cycle, though, Doc, I, I want to stay on the cycle and keep going, playing it through every weekend on Sundays. Uh, and we can insert standalone scenarios as long as they're like used in that campaign mode where they're like a, you know, a little side quest. Um, but what we can do is do those kind of standalone ones. Um, in between? In between, like take a little break, you know, and like, uh, you know, give people time to vote on decks and stuff like that. So uh, we are in episode three of this. What is it by episode five or something? I think something? episode five we have to start figuring out. Yeah, we have to figure out the next scenario. But we, but can, if we, do we insert... can delay. I know, we can push it. Because... Uh, I want to start the whole deck discussion about the next series at least a couple weeks, maybe three weeks in advance. And it'd be weird to do it in the middle of this playthrough, but we could kind of do it near the end of this playthrough by adding in a standalone in between stuff too. Mm -hmm. And or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And or, like, on a Sunday, sticking in another Arkham-themed game, like Mansion of Madness or uh, other Arkham-themed games we own. 
uh, we can play on a Sunday instead to take a break from this mm -hmm. and just keep it and like give time. An, an Arkham themed Sunday to give time for people to submit decks to like a deck contest and vote and all that stuff and you know, debate and things. <laughs> Draw your five. Draw my five. Annual dexterity. Grit your teeth. Pickpocketing. Leather coat. And look what I found. Hmm. Feels like a dump everything. <laughs> Feels like a dump everything. I, I, I don't have any horror or anything. I never, never no, died? No, just me. Okay. Yeah, you never died. Okay. I don't know. Any recommendations here? So I got manual dexterity. I'm thinking of dumping it all, but I could be convinced otherwise. Uh, Grit your teeth. Fast. Play if you fail. Skill test. Get plus one each your skill test remain in the round. I do like that card, though. Uh, Pickpocketing seems great to get a draw engine going. Again, I don't know if after you've made an enemy will happen that often. So uh, we'll see. And then I have Leather Coat. Uh, if I was worried about my health and fighting monsters and I knew better, I might keep that because it's free, get it into play, have something to keep me alive later. Um, and then I have uh, Look What I Found Fast. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less. While well, uh, investigating, discover two clues. I debate keeping just this one um, because I have no problem failing skill tests and getting extra clues from locations. Uh, just you know it always almost always starts off with you need clues and the faster you Quickly. can get them yeah the faster <laughs> you can get them the better you're set off later so it's like hmm taking something that helps me get clues quickly uh seems to be a good idea but i'm thinking of dumping everything because i'll I think probably in draw into this anyway and, yeah uh, they're in agreement with you all right I, okay i was right on my first uh first gut instincts uh let's see one perception fire axe okay Peter Sylvester, all right. An overpower, okay. And a lucky, all right. Okay, that's so I, I think I just drew pretty amazing other than not getting like a magnifying glass or something along those lines, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a nice draw, I think. Two of these cards, like I'm a huge fan. I, I almost kept the manual dexterity. I just like these cards a lot, especially when they like replace themselves and stuff. Mm -hmm. They help keep get you out of those jams. I like them a lot, but. Okay. All right. So I have ritual candles. St. Hubert's Key. I have a Fearless. If this test is successful, heal one horror. Okay, I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, remove all doom from a card you control. Moonlight Ritual. Okay. And Hypnotic Gaze. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay. And Joel Delaney's here, says, finally caught up to the live broadcast, been binging the past ones. Joel. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Thank you for dropping in live. That's awesome. Definitely thinking of keeping ritual candles since uh, I am uh, pulling these symbols all day in the last stream. So this is after I pull one of those symbols. Uh, after it's revealed during a test you're performing, you get plus one skill value to this test. I guess we haven't really read that to know, but... I don't think I need these right now. Yeah, possible keepers here for sure, for sure. Uh, St. Hubert's Key will give me plus one willpower and plus one um, investigate. Minus two sanity is fine right now, and I could get rid of it if I need to. Or I guess when I would die to horror, it just goes away. Hmm. Expensive, though. And then this is the one that lets me not get attacked. When I think you need to find, me. like, your shriveling and whatever the one is that helps you investigate. Like, your spells that help you investigate. Do you have that or no? No. This just, well, this one technically does because it gives me plus one investigate. So it puts it at three, which is better. I think I want to keep these two, St. Hubert's Key and Ritual Candles. Candles are... Hubert's Key and... Yeah, okay, that Bob's on the same page. Candles and Key. Keep maybe. 
across the others for the spells. Dump everything. Yeah, see, I was thinking spells. These other spells are important. So, but so are these. Saying dump, yeah. No, no, no. But the, the, the two spells, like the two things oh, in yeah, Arkham yeah. Horror. Yeah. The sh investigating and fighting or like dealing with enemies invading or something. Those are the two keys that like the whole game. And if you don't have cards to help you in both those aspects, like, you know, what else are you doing, right? Um, so the fact you don't have those, like these could help, but you haven't seen the other ones. So that's, I'm just saying, find so some saying, stuff that helps you with that. I do have two, two St. Hubert's keys, so I could yeah. dump it and find... No, no, do what you're doing. That's fine. Do what you're doing. Or then maybe I just nope. get rid of... Keep those. Keep nope. those do and just doing. draw three. Yeah, do whatever you want. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Go with what you're saying. I'm just saying. My that's why says, I recommend it. My gut says keep these and draw three. Mm -hmm. Go with it. Go with it. Right of Seeking. Stop staring at me, I. That's actually the one. Someone charge Investigate. Yeah. Using, yeah, that's one. Go. Okay. And we got David. He's going to help us. Hey, buddy. I don't yeah, know how our, too. I don't know how our Doom's looking on this one, but we'll see. Uh, what do I got here? This And one more. Oh, we got Shriveling. We didn't get the good one. But I guess that's okay. We got the not yep. hot one. Told you. See, that's what you're looking for. Okay, but now... I, I think we're up for a good start, but it's expensive. I need, I I need David going because it's very expensive. Very yeah, expensive yeah, yeah. hand. Or that other card that's like, uh, my, like you play it and then the spell... You play a spell oh, minus yeah. three or minus something. three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one to start the game with. Too. Yeah. That, that's a keeper. Yeah. Any, any kind of like burst economy early in the game. Yeah. Any game like this, yeah, it's about building yourself up. Cinegamer says, holy cow, I made it for a live stream. Hi, everybody. Yes, Hello. welcome, welcome. Joel says, compliment for you guys. I've watched a lot of Arkham streams and your table setup and face cam. Perfect. Love it. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Everyone has their own taste, right? But we try. I still feel like it could be closer zoomed in, but then you wouldn't be able to see everything. Um, but then again, the problem is we're playing blind. I don't know how big these scenarios get. So I kind of have this like bigger play space where we can like stretch out. But then some scenarios you don't need to, so I wish I could zoom in more. But like, uh, I can zoom in as we play and stuff, or zoom out. But and you, then it'd be like we have to keep moving our decks around and stuff. But this is like my, I think a good balanced way to show it on the screen. Um, but yeah, thank you for the compliment. I think I flipped two of my cards upside down when I was shuffling. It dropped, but <laughs> Doc has a question in the, in the chat for the group. If you guys can uh, help me out. Says finally got my Arkham Horror reorganized. Time to start over. Any recommendations from start to finish? One or two handed solo Arkham DB builds. Um, and... Need al alchemical transmutation, Mel, whichever that one is. That might be the one you were talking is about. That is that the one discount that discounts it by three? I forget that I'm still getting used oh, to the names I, of I all of them. the deck's open right now. On here, we can check. Yeah, I'll never remember all the names of cards. In some, game. some I'm getting used to, but I just. That is this one. Uh, exhaust alchemical transmutation. Spend one charge. Test willpower of one for each point you mm. succeed by. You gain one resource to a maximum of three. You have two of those in your deck. Yeah, yeah, that will help with resources too. So will David if this isn't a uh, low doom game like last one. Doc saying, Rob, you need a second overhead cam. At a different zoom, so you can switch between. Oh, I have that we actually. Have, yeah, <laughs> I have that actually. I know. I should use it more. I know. Is it not set up today? Is it? Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's not. I could set it up in like a minute, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> to spam David for resources. Yeah, I can. And then if I find the um, the one that lets me remove all the doom from a card, that will be good too. As he's saying, uh, Arca, me and the missus just spent the afternoon getting our asses handed to us by Mansions of Madness. Yep, that's, oh, that's a normal thing. that's exciting. Thing. <laughs> that's a normal thing. I, that's recommend, awesome. I recommend using our house rule of an extra action mm -hmm. each a turn. Yeah. And maybe you have a better shot of, of doing well. Yeah, because we did lose a lot of them, and then but they're, we, that they're, meant, that they're to, meant to do that. But then when yeah. we did add in that extra action per yeah. investigator, it yeah. definitely helped. Yeah, I don't really care to play every scenario eight times to figure out the perfect path. And uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. I'd just rather play it once or twice. And we don't want to play three handed. All right. Uh, what's next? Oh, what sorry, that's me. Uh, resources, oh, drop needs. Read the scenario. Introduction to the campaign guide. Perform the scenario setup indicated in the campaign guide. All right, let's get us set up here. 
Okay, scenario three, Echoes of the Past. You heard throbs with a dull ache as you drive through a rainy streets of Arkham towards your next destination. Threats of the stranger looms in your mind and you find yourself glancing often at your rear view mirror, expecting to see the expressions visage of the mask haunting you. Instead, you see nothing but misty, starless night, deserted road behind you. Your thoughts once again wander, as they often have the past few hours, to the King in Yellow and the city of Carcosa and its inhabitants. What was the message behind, or hidden, sorry, inside that awful play, the meaning within its madness? Lone detail worms its way to the forefront of your thoughts, one made apparent by the decisions you'd overheard at Mrs. Or Miss Dumaine's estate, that tonight's performance of the King in Yellow was not the first Arkham had seen of the foul play. There had been at least one other performance, directed by the same man, Nigel Ingram. There is one place in Arkham where records are often kept of important events occurring within the city, the Historical Society's Manor House, Southside. If there are any records of the previous show of the King in Yellow, the Historical Society may have held on to them. Perhaps there you will find the answers to the questions that burn in your mind. Check the campaign log. If Sebastian Moreau is listed under VIPs interviewed, proceed to Sebastian's information. No, he was not. Otherwise, skip to setup. <laughs> oh, man. Interviewed the wrong people. Yep, of course. Of course we did. <laughs> Last scenario was so rough. <laughs> I don't expect much goodness from that one. Uh, all right, set up. Gather all cards from the following counter set, which Rob did this morning. Uh, these sets are indicated by these icons. And it actually, this is a weird one. It actually had me grab uh, some cards from uh, the, a scenario set from the core set. So I oh. had to go to the Midnight Masks, and it said just take these five cards from there and put them in also. So that was kind of weird. I was like trying to find this symbol in our set of enemy, like standalone enemy sets, and I was like, can't find the symbol anywhere. Where is that? And then I read this after and it was like, oh, there it's from a scenario that we knew. It was from the second scenario. So we're going to see some cards we haven't seen in a bit. Uh, now, randomly choose a one ground floor historical society location and one second floor. Uh, third floor, third floor, third floor, third floor, second floor. Well, we need one ground, one second, yeah, hold one on. third. Uh, one ground floor historical society. Okay, so there is three of those. Whoops. <laughs> we Whoops. didn't see it. <laughs> uh, okay, on our entry hall. More historical societies, more historical societies. Uh, quiet halls. Okay. Uh, all right. And one second floor. So the second floor. Okay, there's a ground floor, and there's a third floor, okay, um, remove those locations, randomly choose one, one, and one, remove those locations from the game without looking oh, at their field size. Oh, so these are the ones we're not playing with. Oh, interesting. Uh, put the following locations into play, entry hall. Uh, both copies of Quiet Halls and the remaining six historical society locations. See below for suggested placement. Each investigator begins play at the entry hall. Okay, so let's see suggested placement. Uh, let's see. We have. Can't see which is which. Okay, third floor is on the top. Second floor across the middle. Oh, I guess it makes sense. Ground floor on the bottom. <laughs> uh, so we need entry hall, Quiet Halls. Quiet Hall. Okay. We're going to do third floor, third floor, ground floor, ground floor, second floor, floor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then it says, uh, based on, oh no, sorry. I told us. Oh, each investigator begins at the entry hall. Okay, uh, now it says, uh, so the following cards aside out of play, which I gathered here because I saw that. Uh, Hidden Library, Possessed Oath Speaker, Mr. Peabody, Tattered Cloak, and Clasp of Black Onyx. Okay, those will be set aside. 
uh, based on the number of players in the game, if there are exactly two players in the game, search the gathered encounter sets for one copy of Seeker of Carcosa. Seeker of Carcosa. 232 two, enemy humanoid cultist spawn at an empty historical society location. He's aloof. And it says, forced at the end of the mythos phase, move one clue from Seekers of Carcosa's location to Seeker Car of Carcosa if you cannot place one doom on him instead. Uh, uh. And he is going into play at the third, at a third floor historical society location. Uh, this one, I guess. And it says, check the campaign log. If you fled the dinner party. Oh, that doesn't sound familiar. Uh, no. Oh, you arrive at the historical society with time to spare. Each investigator can take one additional action during the first turn. We did not get that, so we will not have that bonus. Then shuffle the remainder of the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. The rest is do not read yet, so we'll save that. Oh, Let's see how today will go. That's a lot of locations. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little worried about that. Do you want to check how they're set up? You got your little arrows. Yeah. So it looks like. Th these can go both both ways, but you can't go. Uh... I guess super confused. Right, so let's with see this. where we start. Let's let's check out where we start. Let's go. Entry hall is connected to each other ground floor, floor location. A long, warm hall and two grand staircases greet you as you enter the manor house of Arkham's Historical Society. So it is. Uh, we'll read the rest of this in a sec. But uh, two shroud, zero clues. Entry hall is connected to each other ground floor location. It's got to resign. If you flee, or sorry, you flee, leaving the mysteries uh, uh, of the past to the mysterious cultists. Okay. Um, so this goes to yellow, which goes up to quiet halls. So it's not going to connect to these, but it says in text oh, it okay. does. okay, so we don't need to actually put these out right now. So I don't know if we even need arrows at all, really. I know. Because I have a feeling it's just, this goes, this is like the stairwell, you know. And then you go of, either way. Yeah, and you're just like kind okay, of on so the floor. Okay, so let's not do that to yeah, make it less just away. messy. Um, so we have our ground floor, second floor, third floor, and the stairwell is from the entry hall. Takes you up to the quiet halls or the other quiet halls. Uh, all right. So agenda one A says uh, the truth is hidden. Surprisingly, the front doors of the Source Society's Georgian Manor are cracked halfway open when you arrive. Who else could be here at this hour? Do not add doom to this agenda during the Mythos phase. Okay. Forced after one or more clues are placed on an enemy in play, flip those clues to their doom side. And the doom you need on uh, doom for this uh, in play, I guess, is two per investigator, so four. But once we hit four doom in play, which will only happen from we saw the, that jerk, is going to pull. Rush to... Yeah, and others that come out. There is more in there, I'm sure, uh, that do this. Okay, kind of stuff. interesting. Remind me that not to do that. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then a race for answers. Each of the historical society's many rooms contains records and documents that may aid you in the search for the answers about the king in yellow. There must be something here that can guide you toward the truth. So this one we need clues uh, of four to advance it. And we're playing on standard difficulty. So the skull is minus X, the highest number of doom on an enemy in play. So again, reiterating that we need to either destroy those enemies that have doom on them or find some way of stopping them from getting doom on them or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the cultist, minus two. If you fail, place one doom on the nearest enemy. Okay, that's fun. Uh, minus two, if you fail, discard a random clue from your hand. Or card, sorry, card. Why did I say clue? I don't know. Um, and then minus two, if you fail, and there is an enemy in play at your location, take a horror. So a lot of minus twos, it seems, is probably going to be what any of those tokens are doing to us. Okay. So this uh, getting two above in a test seems like a pretty safe one in this. There's not a bunch here that are minus three, minus four, and yeah. beyond. Except for if an enemy is really hoarding... And, Doom, and aren't yeah. the skulls where we have like a whole bunch of them in yeah, there? Yeah. So yeah, that's going to be the rough one. Okay. 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 Uh, we're good. 
All right, so what are we doing? Who's going first? What do you want to do? Oh, I feel like we need to try to get to this guy yep. in about two or three rounds. Also hope no more come up. Well, he only uh, forced at the end of the Mythos phase, move one clue. There is no clues on here Yeah, yet. but there's more. So put one Doom on it if there's no clues. Oh, yeah, if there, yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. So, I, I mean, I can go that direction. I just want to play a Fire Axe first. Yeah, yeah. I want to get some stuff in play, too. Yeah. I want to play Peter and Fire Axe, and then I'll move up one. That's really my play. I don't care if I don't move on the first one. I want to have stuff in play first. Yeah, you go first. You go first. <laughs> okay, yeah. done. Uh, Peter for three. Boom. Fire axe for one. Done. Uh, move. Up here. Quiet Halls is connected to each other's second floor location. Other than the cracking of the wooden floor beneath your steps, the manor is eerily silent. This one is three shroud, no clues. Second floor. Quiet Halls is connected to each other's second floor location. Uh, if each location of play is revealed and there are no clues on locations of play, place one clue per investigator on quiet halls. So if we've gathered up all the clues from all the other locations, which I'm sure there's some yeah. on each of these, maybe not, maybe randomly we threw away ones that have no clues or clues on them, uh, we'll start putting clues on here. we got to reveal every location in play, and this thing will start generating its own clues. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at these. They all say when an enemy spawns at the location, reveal this location. Oh, jeez. Okay. Wait, did that spawn though? Is that technically spawn? It did yeah. say spawn him yeah. at this okay. location. Sorry. Yeah, I they didn't read these, but forest. When an enemy spawns at this location, reveal this location. An unadorned wooden door leads to one of the third floor rooms used by the historical society. Uh, record office. Two shroud. Two clues will go on it. Uh, third floor. Each of uh, each enemy at this location gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Oh, that's oh, great. Man. That's just great. But he's a, he's a two, so he only becomes a three. Done? Uh, yes. Two shroud. That's not terrible. If hopefully the other ones are that low. All right, well, I'm definitely going to play a shriveling for three. Uh, it's going to get five charges. Of my ability. I would like to get David also into play for action two. And then I can move. Uh, I can. Yeah, sorry, one sec. Uh, so, Bob, you're talking about the one at the bottom, right? That I keep remembering what that is. And that is called an Elder Thing token. The bottom one? I always wonder what that was. I keep forgetting to look it up. Elder thing. Elder thing. <laughs> that's cool. So there's elder sign and an elder thing. Yep, that's an elder thing. Okay. It sure sense. is. Okay. I'm going to explore one of these bottom floor locations, I think, just to see what's going on. Maybe I'll just go this way. I think they also... Yep. Uh, so you found the meeting room of the Historical Ooh. Society, which is four shroud, two clues. Uh, it's a ground floor passageway. Exhaust. So for an action, you can exhaust oh. an ally asset to discover a clue at this location. Limit once per round. So okay. that's once per round per investigator. So uh, okay. I can technically come there and do the same thing, but... Okay. Well, I can definitely do that since I do have an ally and play with yep. that. I can't do it this turn. So. Cool. That is that. All right. Enemies. Uh, uh, this guy's not a hunter. He's aloof. And now we go to a reset. Ready up cards, draw, pulled out a leather coat, gain a resource. Oh, a spirit seeker. Okay, we can actually get this into play this time. It's not really okay, gain a resource. Check your hands, you're good. Yep. Do not place doom on the agenda. Okay. Then we check the threshold. Nope. Uh, do we have to do something with him though at the end of the end of the mythos phase? Which I'm about to draw my yep. card okay. in the mythos phase right now. Yep. Oh no, we found a Wizard of the Order spawn in an empty location. It retaliates, forced at the end of the Mythos phase, place a Doom on this guy. This is that dirty guy we've seen before. Uh, empty location, you say? Spawn at that empty location. Okay. Oh no, oh no. 
Uh, one, two. Spawn at an empty location. After the Acolyte enters play, place one Doom on it. Uh, I could put it back here. But you're not going to be there for a while if you're sitting there trying to get clues off. Yeah, right? but I could do it once. Come over, fight. Only oh, okay. for one. Yeah, true. Right? Uh, and okay. place a Doom on it when he enters play. Okay. All right. And then now we would move one of those clues on clips, right? Uh, move a clue from Truth Seeker uh, to this guy if you cannot place a Doom on him instead. Oh, it's this that flips it, I think. I thought I read somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Nope. I think he just gets one. Oh, here. After one or more clues are placed on an enemy in play, flip those clues oh. to their Doom side. Okay, Mike, I know we. Let's just say that on the guy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyways. Maybe it's used differently somewhere yeah, yeah. else. <laughs> Flip, flip flow location. Which oh, one? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that one doesn't say that. Yeah. And this one doesn't say that. Yeah, we put them on places that don't flip. Yeah, this one just says the connected rules, not the flipped rules. Yeah, and this one's already revealed. Didn't say we can't put them in the halls. Yeah, it just said empty. That one was specific. Yeah, so. only only these ones on the left and right, they uh, they say flip if an enemy's there. Okay. Okay. I mean, we could use the enemies to put them here to flip locations to see what's going on, but I'm kind of putting them in my path, I think. Yeah, same. That's where That's I'm, I'm thinking. thinking especially it. because they have, especially this one and that one, they have Doom on him. Worry that. All right. Well, who's going first? Uh, you. Okay. Sure. Uh, let me think. Four. Four. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm move in for one. This guy is going to engage with me. Um, I will fight. I'm going to use the axe. During an attack, I'm going to spend one resource and one resource to go up to fight six. Uh, against the wizard, it was a four. Pluses or anything, right? Where was that pluses thing? They get plus one. This oh, one. this thing. All right, so I'll spend those two resources. Now my fire axe says if I have no resources in my pool, I get plus one damage. So that would be enough to kill him. So I'm testing. Uh, or I could use Duke. No, I'll use a fire axe. Um, and yeah, I'll just I'll just use the fire axe. Uh, so I'm testing six against four. Oh, Wizard of the Order gets Doom at the end of Mythos. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we need to give them a Doom. Oh, sorry. Well, so we already have three Doom in play. That's Yeah, but crazy. I think I can, I think I can get I know, this I know, one, hopefully. But it, it's a four threshold, so, like, very fast. Yeah. Uh, that sucks. Let's see. A minus two, perfect. What am I playing for? Okay, great. Uh, so this guy's dead. Gone. All right, so I moved, I fought. I'm going to use Duke's ability to investigate, but I'll do the whole move thing ahead of time. I'll move in here, um, and then I'll investigate. It's four on two. Uh, I think that's okay. Oops. Yep, four on two. Auto fail. Um, okay, done. Okay. <sighs> okay, so we're not going to do his ability because I want to get the clue. And I worry that in case I miss. How much is your fight you're going to be doing that against him? Uh, five? Five. Yeah. Okay. This so, is plus one, yep. so it'd be six. Okay, six on yeah, three, yeah, and good. then. Good. No, six on three. I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually going to, for first action, I'm going to exhaust an ally, discover a clue. Yeah, we need to get four clues fast to like flip this, hopefully. I know. Then I'm going to move for action two, which engages this guy. And then I'm going to use shriveling to spend one charge, fight. I use my willpower instead. Uh, so I am at 
Oh, I'm at five. Five. Five on three? Fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Five on three. Oh, I, I didn't reveal the room. Oh. Oh, man. I, I thought it was already revealed. I'm being dumb. So quiet halls, each other third, uh, each other third floor locations connect to this one. If each location play is revealed, and there's oh, because it's the same thing. This one will gather clues on it too every time if we have uh, as an oh, as an action. Sorry, these are actions. Yeah. That, that you can fill. You can get clues if they've all disappeared on enemies. I guess. So yeah, sorry, it doesn't change anything. It's three shroud, three shroud, same as this one. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was already revealed when I went there. I don't know why. I guess no we were talking about revealing it for an enemy before. No worries. Okay. I'm five on three. Yes, I got it. So he is dead. That doom goes away. That is done. Try to go get that. Depending on what happens in the mythos phase. Alright, so enemies. No. Uh, nope. uh, reset. Reset. Up Duke. Draw a card. I get a guts. Nice. Get a resource. Can't initiate. Well, when I put play, I get a doom on it. Okay. All right. And uh, descent into madness, a surge, reveal. Uh, or, sorry, revelation. You have at least horror on you, lose one action. I do not. I'm so getting I'm a surging. resource. And a fanatic. Man, enemy is like crazy <laughs> in this one. Uh, so spawn revealed location with the most clues. How much is he? So three and two three. damage. I mean, if you want, you have a plus one damage on your thing. I have, yeah, yeah. I can, I can. So you can go on and fight him and then do your thing. Oh, it would be have to go here, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. You're going there anyway. You said right. Yep, yep. Unless something stops me here. But yeah, you might draw into an enemy. But if it's fine, it's fine. I could put him with me. What does it here. say after he enters play? What? Uh, force after he enters play, move one clue from his location to him. Oh. And then it says force after you defeat him, take control of all its clues. So you get the clue, so you don't have to do this this thing to get but it. But it's gonna flip. Once a clue goes on it, it flips to the doom side. Oh. Yeah, this one broke some of these. Oh. That's annoying. Okay, but okay. So... Yeah, I mean put you can put it there and you try to get yours. You can just ignore this guy then. Yeah. Yeah. Because we do want to reveal other locations, I yeah. think. So you and can... he just sits with one Doom on it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah uh, all right. So you grab a card? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was your search? Okay. Ooh. Oh, same thing. Okay, okay. Perfect. So I have no horror. So I'll reveal another one. Here is chanting. It's a hex. Revelation. Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy in play. If there's no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck and just offer cultist. Yep. Or actually, he's nearest to you. He's nearest to you. Yeah, yeah. Holy, maybe I do need to go get him. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Your goal now. Whoa. Yep. All okay. right. Well, forget what we thought. Uh, yep. Yep. Like, plans don't seem to work out. That's why I don't make plans in this game. <laughs> like I said, don't make plans until the start of your turn, really. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, do you want me to go and see if I can do it? I don't if that matters. will not change. Go ahead. Okay, so I will move for one. Mm -hmm. Engage he engages you. with me. I will send a shriveling. Oh, we didn't do at the end of the mythos phase for this guy. Oh. He's going to move a clue to him. So that miss on the clue, very frustrating. So that would have been three when the check happened. Oh, because that was no, at the end. end of the mythos, end of mythos phase. Never yeah, mind, yeah. never mind. Just happened. Just happened. Okay. Okay, so I use shriveling. Right now I am five on three. I'm debating putting in one. Make it six on three because I'm feeling ner. Oh, I have one more action though. No, I'll go. I'll go five on three. I have one more action if I need to. Oh, it's fine until the token that shall not be named is pulled. I know, yeah, right? Which we've already pulled once. Minus one. Oh, Sweet. good, good, good. Boom. Okay, so he's dead because I have plus two. Okay, and I still have one more action, so I guess I will just start moving back. Maybe go to this place. Okay. I move, fought, move. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. I will engage this aloof dude. A plus one fight. So he's a three. Oh, 
let's do it. Uh, I'm going to use the Fire Axe again. I'm going to fight him with the Fire Axe. Uh, plus two fights, so I'm at four against three. I'm going to throw an Overpower in there, just for card draw purposes, really. Hopefully, unless I draw a token that shall not be named. <laughs> Grab this one. Oh my, oh my god. god, this is... Uh, I'm about to quit the game. I hate the admin. All right, uh, so yeah, we just lose that card. This. Okay. Um, so I guess I will fight him with Duke for a my final action. I'll throw in a leather coat for another fight. So it's a five on three. And I'll shake the bag up again, <laughs> dig down to another token again, and pull it a minus one. Okay, right, that's good. good. So boom. Gone. See ya. Okay, we can see Put those there. there. Gone. Uh, okay, and I'm finished. Enemies? Nothing, nope. right? Reset. You flip. Ready up. Draw a card. I drew a dumb luck, which is two agility symbols. Fast. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less. Oh, yeah, I did have lucky. Nope, that didn't matter. No, because you pulled the, the auto fail, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. I thought. Uh, play after you fail a test by two or less during an evasion attempt against a non-elite enemy. They set an enemy on top of the encounter deck. Hmm. Okay. I got hmm. Ward of Protection. It's fast. Play when you draw a non-weakness treachery card. Cancel the revelation and spend one horror. So that's possibly good. You gotta remember I have that when we're drawing. Who has three health? That that guy had three health? Oh, he did. He did. He did. Uh, oh. Just two damage on him. Sorry, I thought he was a two. Yep. I thought he was a two. My bad, my bad. Oh, so then he... Yeah, so I couldn't kill him on my turn. Yeah, yeah. So then he's going to hit you... Yeah, with the... uh, one horror. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no doom. The King's Edict Pack Revelation. After each cultist... Uh, for each cultist enemy in play, move one clue from that enemy's location to that enemy. So at the end of this round, each cultist enemy in play gets plus one fight each clue and or doom on it. If no clues are moved by this effect, King and Edict gain surge. Oh, no clues are moved. So hold on. So there's like a rule on here you gotta remember. Till the end of the round, each cultist enemy gets plus one fight for each clue and or doom. So this guy's a four, plus one here's a five. Oh no. Okay, awesome. Yep, I think we need to flip this. I think, I think what's happening here, or no, we need this, I don't know, this thing that flips them to doom, it seems like there's a lot of talk about clues and or doom on enemies. So we want so the there has No, there has to be something in here or that changes yeah. where they just take clues and they hold clues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can get those clues back. Yeah. This can't be the only way to get clues. Because if this keeps happening, we're never going to get clues, right? So, I, I don't... Well, you have one. I could have had one if I passed that test, but... Yeah, and if that guy didn't go in... It just seems like this is a struggle to get to four. Really, yeah. it really a struggle. Um, but yeah, we got to remember this. So, I'm just going to leave that there. Okay. And I drew another card. Uh, Revelation. If there is a cultist enemy in play with Doom on it, move all the Doom from each cultist enemy to the current agenda. This effect may cause it to advance. Okay, so now Oh, he's... that's good. Yeah, Because now weird. they're not on him. Well, oh, yeah. that was kind of good. Uh, if there are no cultist enemies in play with Doom on them, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy. Draw it, shuffle the encounter deck. So we know there's ways more cultists. So it's just going to be lots of cultists. Yeah. Uh, they're of also cultists. suggesting to put your uh, uh, whore on Peter. I don't know. Oh, yeah, duh. I forgot I have him already. <laughs> I, I put him into play so quick. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I put him <laughs> no, not okay. 100% today. I'm like... That's okay. Trying to keep track of everything. My brain is fried um, already. Oh. But... Oh, this is one of the hiddens. Oh. So we got to be careful. I didn't realize that they had I that in here. I about that. Remember how that works. Just oh, put it in your hand, yeah. right? And you got to like deal with it on your own. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but this is, hold on, hold on, hold on. How is this worded? Can I do this? Yeah, I know about the Pete and the healing. Not... I totally understand how Pete works. It's just I forgot to just... He's already oh, there. I, I can, can already put horror on him. I like, can actually... Right away. I can actually get rid of it with... If I spend one... On your turn, probably? I can pl play this fast. Cancel the revelation effect. And I take one horror. Because this... 
is listed as a revelation. Okay. So it says revelation. Secretly add whispers to your hand. So I don't have to do that. I'm assuming it just goes to your discard pile. Yeah. But I don't know if there's a window to do that and all that stuff. I know other people will know all the timing windows. I don't have that open on this. Oh, but this is this is what this is for. Oh, but sometimes there's like not windows to play cards. And but then how would I ever play this? Because it says cancel the yeah, cards rev I know, revelation I know. effect. I know, it makes sense. Yeah, when you I draw non-weakness. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't know. That's all. Go ahead. Do whatever. Yeah, so I'm doing that because I feel like I just never done it, so I don't play. know. Okay, because I don't want that in my hand. Oh, uh, so oh. actually, I don't take the horror because I didn't have to add it to my hand. But wouldn't the enemy have given me horror? Oh, that did it. Never mind. Didn't the enemy attack me after? Because Pete says, after your turn ends, heal one horror from Peter. But that would have attacked me in the enemy phase, right? Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't have been my turn yet? Not yet. So I gotta wait till the end of my next turn to heal it, yes, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That was that. Yeah, he said, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. and then Kate is saying that is what Ward of Protection is for, for stuff like that. Okay, oh, okay. So that's perfect. 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 Okay. okay, cool. Luckily, I drew, just drew that. That's awesome. Okay, that's good, because I didn't want that. Because that was going to not let me trigger any of my free abilities. I wouldn't be able to play David or oh trigger God. David. We're going to see that card again. There's I probably know. more in there. I know. And I remember from the last one what some of these do, because I think I was the one that had them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So. All right, so now what's next? Where are we at? Uh, is true cards? It's, yep, it's End our of turn. Mythos phase. Uh, move one clue. He's, there's none left. Uh, so we were going to place a doom on him. Okay. Okay. Now, do you want to go first? or Sure. Do you want to do? Uh, so this guy is a plus. He's a four. Uh, oh, did I not get a resource? Draw a card. I did, I think. I just didn't get my resource. Uh, I don't know if I did. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Let me... I don't think I did either. What did I draw? Did I, I draw a card? Maybe I drew that Ward of Protection. Virax can get me up to four on a four. Hmm... Have lucky in here. All right, I'm gonna do fire axe. I think mm, no. Let's just do Duke for four on four. Plus one. Yeah. Okay. Did not expect that. Thought I was using lucky here. Well, that will do two damage, which is enough to defeat this guy. Yeah. Yes, Bob, he had two Doom on it, but then one of the cards put the Doom on the agenda instead. Yeah. So it, they moved over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, the next card that I surged after this said take Doom off of Occultist, put it on the agenda, so yeah. we can't deal with it now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it stops us from, like, making it never end. Uh, so that was one. Oh, two. Let's pitch a card. I'm going to pitch. Dumb luck. Ready up, Duke. Then I'm going to use Duke's Investigate and do the move before it. Go here. Uh, while I'm investigating this location, controls Mr. Peabody. This location gets minus two shroud. But we need to How find, Mr. find Peabody. Mr. Peabody. Yeah, I don't know. Might be on a, another card in play okay. or something. Or maybe he's on, like, the next one. We get Mr. Uh, Peabody or something. I don't know. Okay. While an investigator at this location controls Mr. Peabody, minus two shadow, this office must belong to somebody important within the historical society. So, four clues. Four clues. So, enemies will come and gobble those up real fast. Yeah, but you are still... Uh, yeah, I'm doing a four test. Um, against four. Yep. Uh, I'll throw a perception in on that. Make it a six. Draw the red token. Uh, so I drew the elder. What was it? The elder thing. Elder thing. Uh, minus two. If you fail, if if you fail, and there's an enemy at your location, take one horror. Do not fail. Two. Uh, so I succeed. Get my first clue of the game. Draw a card. I drew encyclopedia. Can help with 
trying to get these maybe. Yeah. I don't know if that's the best spot to do that at. Uh, all right. Then I'm done. End of my turn. I will exhaust Peter Sylvester to heal a horror. Good. Okay. Hey. Okay, I'm going to move here. See what's on the bottom floor. We got another records office with two shroud, one clue per investigator. Each enemy at the location, the same thing gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Okay, but a two shroud. I'm liking a two shroud because I might be able to actually get some of these. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was one action. We reveal. No, we need to do the second floor still. Yeah. Okay. It's only a two on two. Yeah, I'm not as good as. I could use David, put a doom on him to get a resource. Mm -hmm. We'd be at three when we check. No, there might be cards in there that. Add Doom and then check. We've already seen one. That's yeah. add Doom to something. Now check if it advances. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I you just, can. Maybe I just you wait. can. Now's the time. Can't, you know, just be held by something that may not happen. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so exhaust David. You may place one Doom on him and gain one resource for each. Action. Three? Three. Nice. Okay. Now I have another willpower. Need one more to get the right of seeking. Um... So I think I just do a two on two test. Is that silly? I don't know. Failing doesn't hurt you yeah. unless you draw. Nothing puts. Oh, you place a doom on the nearest enemy. There would be none, so yeah. you're good. Uh, discard a random card from your hand, or if there's an enemy in play. Or if there's any at your location, take a horror. Yeah, I think I'm going to try, just because I have one more action. I don't want to move. Yep, yep. Oh, the other thing I could do is maybe gain a resource, but... Gain a resource. Or I could draw a card. I'll gain a resource, actually. Let's try to set myself up for success here. Okay, that's me done. Enemies, nothing. No. Set. Draw. Fight or flight. But for one, play during your turns fast until the end of the round. You get plus X fight and plus X ability. For X is the amount of horror on me. Oh, I found none my weakness. Uh, okay, so revelation. Put oh, revelation angry spirits into play. No, I can't. I can't do a weakness. Oh, it yeah, says... yeah. Uh, oh, that's non weakness cool. treachery. Oh, okay, okay. okay, so put angry spirits into play that. in your threat area. Exhaust a spell. Okay, so for free. Exhaust a spell asset. Move one charge from that asset to... Oh. Yeah, this is when you got to do it multiple times during the game. When the game ends, if Angered Spirits has fewer than four charges on it, you must suffer... Mm -hmm. Okay, that's annoying. Okay. Here, did you get a resource? Oh, my gosh. Okay. A doom. Some... No. Draw. Locked door. Revelation. Attach the location with the most clues and without a locked door attached. My own location. Patch location cannot be investigated. You have to test fight of four to break down the door or agility of four to pick the locks. See it? Hard lock door. Oh, you're always saying I only did two. Okay, then I'll just gain another resource then. Sorry. What? You're saying I only did two. Move and resource. I thought, but maybe I didn't. I'll play a card or something. Okay, I'll just gain another resource so then I can play. Uh, all right. Uh, I drew. Yep, you yep. draw. Uh, nope. Hidden now. Yeah, David's was a fast action you did, right? Yeah, that was why, yeah. yeah David's was fast. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So I just gained another resource to. That's fine. Okay. So let us straight is a peril. Revelation. I must decide to choose one. Place one doom. Or sorry. Uh, place one of your clues on a cultist enemy. I don't know if there is any. Nope. Nope. Place one doom on the current agenda. This effect may cause the current agenda to advance. Oh, it's gonna, I think you have I to have do that, to, right? because I can't do the yep. other one. There you go. Okay. This will cause it to advance, so let's remove all these dooms. 
Uh, dark ritual, a phrase in a language you cannot describe, whispers through the building, and without warning, all the electric lights shatter at once. Light a nearby candle and continue your search. The building is quite different once plunged into darkness. Shadows and silhouettes dance along the walls. Crevices you hadn't noticed before draw your wary eye. Uh, what other secrets does this building hold? Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Next is a ransacking the manor. Though the whispering has ceased, the sounds of rummaging and furniture shifting is unmistakable. Whoever is here, they're searching just as thoroughly as you are. Do not add doom to this agenda during the mythos phase. Forced. After one or more clues is placed on an enemy in play, flip those clues to their doom side. Okay, so it's the same thing. And two per investigator, so four doom again. We'll advance that uh, going forward. If you thought you got rid of all the cultists in the deck and you didn't have to worry about them for a bit, oh no, we're going to put them right back in there and draw them over and over again. Woo! Woo! All right, who's going first? What are we doing? <sighs> I don't know. You, uh, oh, this, you have a locked door now too, right? On there? Mm -hmm. You go first. I don't know. Or I can, I, yeah, you go first. Cool. Uh, I'll spend two. I'm going to play Encyclopedia. I've got five secrets. As an action, I can exhaust Encyclopedia. Spend one secret. Choose investigator at location. That investigates plus two to a skill of your choice till the end of the phase. Care about breaking down that one? Not really. Uh, so I'm just going to go one, two. Done. Go ahead. All right. So first I'm going to do this. I'm going to exhaust shriveling. I have a plan. A plan with my spirit seeker, I think. So. Okay, let's put into play. Oh. Let's put into play for four right of seeking. This gets three charges, but four because of my ability. This lets me uh, investigate using my willpower instead of intellect. Okay. Mm, very and nice. And then if you, nice. uh, if you succeed, discover one additional clue at the location. Oh, beautiful. And then if one of the symbols is pulled during the test, after the test resolves, lose all remaining actions. Turn. So that that's... was action one. If you want to do anything else before this. Yeah. Um, one, two. Yeah, I want to put Rate of Seeking in for two. So this one is for free. I can exhaust Spirit Seeker, choose an asset you control with charges. Either return that asset to your hand or move all charges from the asset to your resource pool. So I'm thinking that once I get down to one, I'll just keep using that. Then I'll put it back in my hand and again. Unless yeah. you find the better version. Unless I find the better version. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so then for my last action, I will, this, oh, it doesn't exhaust, spend a charge, we'll investigate using, oh, should I use David first for free? So that'll give me one mm -hmm. more. Yep, let's use David first for free. One resource. So now I have, spend the, spend the charge. Now I have six on two. If I succeed, I get to discover both clues. Mm -hmm. And we can advance this. Because we'll have four, yes, right? Yes, yes. Don't fail. Oh, well. Minus X. X is the highest number of doom on an enemy in play. Oh, which is none. Yep, so you succeed, so continue with. Okay, so first clues. I succeed, and then if one of those is pulled, I yep. lose the remaining action, which that, is fine. So okay, so now we can there. advance because it's not yep. an action to advance. Correct. So, First. a late night studies. You find a record kept in one of the society's historians. Per, uh, sorry, but find a record kept by one of the society's historians pertaining to the dreadful events in quotes surrounding the closing of an old theater in Arkham, the Cedar Playhouse. Though there is no explicit mention of the King in Yellow, you believe you're on the right track. The historian's notes are cut short, and there is a faded handwritten page clipped to the final entry. This matter is. Too ghastly for the public eye. I am placing the remainder of this record in the hidden library. All further inquiries should be uh, should be done away 
from prying eyes, for this is a dangerous matter, and no one, and or sorry, and not one to be researched lightly. Sorry, this uh, X oh. is a little messy. Uh, for each revealed historical society location, add one per investigator clues to it, maximum of its clue value. Two maximum of its clue value. Okay. So this gets two. This gets two. This one gets two? Yeah. This one, this one gets, gets one. one. That's cool. That's not really good, but... Well, I can easily probably do that again to grab those two. Yeah, no, but enemies, that just means more for enemies yeah. to grab, yeah. which we just shuffle them back in, more will come, yeah, so that yeah. kind of sucks. exactly. So next we have Mistakes of the Past. Somewhere in the manor is a hidden library where you might be able to find more information about the king in yellow. You must find the way in if you are to continue your investigation. So the way in is to put two more clues per investigator on this, and we'll flip it and find the library, I'm sure. Yeah. The library is not a play. Yeah, I didn't flip my Okay, so that was that your was my turn. The end of my turn. Yep. So we're all done. Enemies, nothing. No. Uh, reset. Ready up any cards. Draw a card and gain your resource. Fight or flight again. Gain a resource. Gain a resource. Done. Okay, this is not terrible. So we can use this, so we can put a little bit more doom on David, oh. and then we can remove it before oh, we're gonna have okay. to flip. So I found this peril lead oh. led astray. Revelation must decide one. Choose place one. Uh, there's no cultist so we have enemy. To put a doom. So a doom on the current agenda could advance it. It's not going to advance because there's only two. two in play. An enemy. Oh my gosh. Agent of the king. So four four two. Uh, he's going to pray. Oh, but he's going to get engaged with me anyways. Forced. After Agent of the King attacks you, move one of your clues to Agent of the King, and then forced. When you defeat Agent of the King, take control of all of its clues. It does have one victory. That's good. That's kind of annoying, but okay. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yeah, I'm just going to move to one of these. Yeah, you go uh, ahead. Okay. I'm only going to fight this guy, I think. I'll move to this one, I guess. Uh, actually, if I use Encyclopedia, use an investigator location. That investigator's plus two to a skill until the end of the phase. So I could get plus two investigate, then use Duke, I think, right? So I'll do that. I'm going to do investigate. Uh, send one off there. And I'm going to use Duke, actually. And to do a move in and investigate thing and hope it works out. Uh, I found the historical library, uh, three shroud, four clues are going to go on it. After you successfully investigate this location, take two horror. That's fun. Oh. Then discover one clue at this location, limit once per round. Okay. Crap. Okay. Uh, fun times. At least with Peter, it's I, kind, I know, of, I know. kind of helpful. I understand. But. Oh, but this is only limit once per round. So if I investigate a second time, because I, I buffed up this to try to do this twice. Oh, yeah, twice, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, that's great. Uh, so I'm coming in with uh, six. One, three. Minus four. Right now. Uh, so I'll do a lucky play, I guess. Fast play if you'd fail a skill test, get plus two to your value. Okay, so I get the whole two clues, and I get two horror, which I have it. one. One more. So Peter, hold that for me. Uh, all right. <laughs> and then next, I am going to um, investigate it again. I could try, yeah, I'll toss this, ready up Duke, and I'll do Duke again uh, for another investigate. With a six on three. Plus one. So just take one clue this time. Don't get any horror. Just limit once per round. Yeah, I assume the whole thing is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, boom. Good? Yes. Okay. I am just going to attack using shriveling. It's totally. 
spoiled my plans, but that's okay. He's just a two invade. Can you invade him? Mm. Two, four, well, he's seven. got victory points. I know. But we don't need to deal with him right now. I mean, he would stay there and probably... Actually... Well, he only takes stuff. Oh, he is cultist, so this thing will make him... The deck will make him... And he's a hunter, the... so he's gonna... Yeah, I know. Figure... I'm just saying, if you don't want to deal with him right now and you think it's a big waste of time... Yeah, it'd be nice to defeat him. If yeah. You, if you can just defeat him... I'm gonna you... try. How much uh, fight? Do you have at least six going against him? Yeah. Oh, then... Because yeah, I have yeah. David with... Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. You're good. Four health, so yeah. you can do it in two actions. Possibly. Free, Maybe three. If I did a free action, will that make him attack me nope. of opportunity? Nope. So then those, let's do those a free. Are like fast, I think. Let's you do a can... free action first. That me... gives you more, doesn't it? Does no, it only you? no, it's only one. While he has one demonic oh, okay, gets plus. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I don't even need to do that right now. No need to do that right now. So let's just use shriveling. Uh so we have five, six. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> six. Six on four. I feel like I need one more. Yeah, let's put one more in. So we have seven. Seven on four. Oh, he has plus one fight and plus one evade. At your location. Okay, so it's... So he's actually a five. So seven on five? Yeah, which is... So fine. Yeah. Can you do that twice? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. At least. <laughs> uh, minus X, highest number of doom on an enemy in play. None. None. Okay, so zero. So that's good. Yeah, but I did do shriveling, so we'll do that in a sec. But I did put two damage on him. I'd have to take a horror. Yeah. Uh, take one horror, yes. Here back in okay so i can use the last shriveling to try again could make it again yeah i guess we'll put the candles in yeah we're gonna put the candles in so again i am oh yeah sorry i didn't complete it yeah i forgot i forgot the peat at the end of my turn right oh yes, yes, yes. oh yeah bob you're wrong it wasn't a properly done ash can turn <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're not counting Kate, end, end Kate of turn agreed. window. Kate agreed. End of turn. No, no. Kate's saying Peter. Use Peter's. Uh, oh, you're she's right. Putting an arrow with Peter. Yeah, you're right. I'm assuming that's what she means. Yeah. Do his reaction. I thought she was saying like, yes, you're nope, right. I, I thought agree. So too. <laughs> I agree with well, the she's statement. Point, or she's pointing at Bob, saying, "No, nope, Bob, uh, Peter." <laughs> so my turn was fine. Just the end of turn window was not so hot. But... <laughs> all good. It's all good. Okay. So again. <laughs> Five, six, seven. Seven on five. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I have to do it. Oh, yeah, you don't. Oh, my gosh. Okay, but I still got it. Yep. But I have to take another horror. So just take a three in. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, three. So this guy's gone. This guy's gone. That's a victory, so make sure you keep it separate. That's yep, gone. It's going up here in our victory display. <sighs> okay, and I still have one more action. I think I want to do. Free. Use an asset you control with uses on it. Either return that asset to your hand. So yeah, I'll do that. We'll put shriveling back in my hand mm -hmm. for free. Um, for free, I will. I'm not going to add any more doom. I'll just take one resource. Then I'll use this free action. Yeah. Or yeah. or do you have a way to get a clue? Yeah, I'm going to get a clue. Oh, yeah, yeah. That so I'm going to use this free action. Oh, this doesn't need to. Oh, this exhaust. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, it... It's fine. I don't need to. You don't oh, need I that do. To get I a do. Off here? Oh, I don't exhaust. Yeah, you just spent a clue. I just spent a clue, so it doesn't matter. So then I'll. Now I'll do Rite of Seeking uh, to investigate here for David has. So five, six. Against two. Against two. Six against two. Use David fast and kill him off with the horror. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. When, oh, you're shriveling. That's fine. Minus, Minus three. three. Still good. Six yep. on two. So Blue. I get two. That means we... Uh, oh, you get two? Yeah. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at this location. This is such a good card. All right. So let's spend four, uh, four total. You want me to spend two? Yes, I do. Okay. I can have a clue. Yep. Uh, I don't think it matters, but... No, oh, but that's the faster There is go. ones that put clues back on off of your investigator, but... Uh, so this. 
Those secret passageways. Oh, I bet we're going to find the library. Uh, as you rummage through a desk drawer, you were startled when you hear a voice behind you. Excuse me, can I help you? You, you are relieved to find the voice belonging to a thin elderly man wearing... Oh, okay, so... Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> well, no, he could still sound like oh, that. Oh, yeah, he could, he could. A uh, thin elderly man wearing wide-rimmed glasses, a member of the historical society, no doubt. You explain to him that you were searching for a hidden library somewhere in the manor, though you purposely leave out why. He introduces, introduces himself as Mr. Peabody, the historical society's curator. I'll help you find what you are looking for, he explains, but only if you tell me what this is about once we get there. Uh, you hope it doesn't come to that. For each revealed historical society location, add one per investigator clues to a maximum of its clue value. So same thing. I think it's only on the one that I'm on. Uh, this oh, one, one can get, get one. Oh. Uh, this one can get that two get, more. Yeah. Can we get, no, it's two per investigator, so we can get three more. But we're only putting on one per investigator, so that's two. The max oh, you're putting on is sorry, two sorry, on a location. Sorry, I see, I see, right I see. I, sorry, yeah. Uh, all right. And then choose an investigator to take control of the set aside Mr. Peabody asset. We okay. get to read it first to decide. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. I, I don't care. We're doing that. All right, Mr. Peabody, Historical Society Curator, Ally, Historical Society. He's got the companion icon, so he takes up a companion slot. Exhaust Mr. Peabody as an action. Choose a location. Still, Mr. Peabody readies. That location gets minus one shroud and gains the passageway trait. Well, that's how we're going to get the library thing. That... Exhaust Mr. Peabody. I could take it and get rid of David. Your Peter is better, right? Is it, is it going, where is this going into my hand? Take control. I don't remember what take control means. You're going to put it into play. Okay, so if I put it into I play, think, then I'm going to remove David. I, I'm pretty sure. Is that is that correct? You guys know take control? Or does he go into your hand? Does he go into the deck? Doesn't take a slot when entamed. Oh, when entamed from the scenario text. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't so have then, to clear David yet. Perfect, okay. But in the future, in right? In the future, if right? The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, what else to say? Whoops. Uh, and then it says, put the set aside hidden library location into play. Yes. Right? So while an enemy okay. while an enemy is moving, hidden library gains the passageway tree. I don't know what this is about, but uh, most of the researchers in the historical society don't even know if, of the library's existence. What terrible truths could it be hiding? So we just put it in play, like anywhere. Oh, maybe this will tell us. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like so confused <laughs> like, by. I'm lost in how we get I, in there. I'm like looking for <laughs> symbols and stuff, so I'm like peeking on the back, but I'm like I don't know what I'm looking for here. Uh, the oath. Uh, this building is very. Old and filled with a manner of secret passageways, Mr. Peabody explains. Perhaps one of them will lead to the library you're looking for. Locations with the passageway trait are connected to one another. Okay, there we go. Objective. Only investigators in the hidden library may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So it's a three per investigator. So we need six clues to advance uh, on this one. And we need to be in the hidden library, which is here. Which passageways... Oh, so this one said... So sorry, that said... Only investigators in a hidden... Oh, sorry, sorry. Locations with passageway to trade are connected to each other. So I can make... Yeah. Choose a location until he's ready. That location gains one shroud and passageway. But also, this is a passageway. So we can sneak to there from here without him oh, even. Oh, this is a passageway. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, you're on a passageway. Oh, there you go. So, so I, I, I can go from there to there right now. Well, I have oh, to exhaust right this. Oh, no. I no. can exhaust mine. That's just being, that's a bonus, because you may not yeah. find him, I think. So, so that makes yeah, it more yeah, flexible, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. But I can do it to my, uh, I can do it to yes. my location, so yes. I can get there, too. But we just need six clues okay. before. Okay, I can try to get these two with my last rate of seeking. Okay, okay. That was, I think. Do all your actions? Let me count them out. I think I did, because I think yeah, I did this. Fight, fight. I did this last in case I lost yeah. the, okay. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. enemies. I don't None. think there's any. Reset. Not my head. Okay, draw. Do a will to survive. Fast. Play only during your turn. Do not reveal chaos token. Uh, do not reveal chaos tokens for the next skill test you perform this turn. Oh, 
okay. I don't really have much of a discard pile, but I did get Quantum Flux, so I can shuffle discard pile. Did you get? Yep. Okay. Doom. Uh, we check Doom. There's only two in play, so we're good still. I'll draw oh. this Peril. You can't. Oh yeah, sorry, it's hidden. <laughs> just I recognize. Oops, I'm sorry. I just recognize the art. Yeah, yeah, my bad. While you're reading that, the library have the passage trait. This one. While an enemy is moving, hidden library gains. Oh yeah. So how do we get in there? Maybe I can give this one. Choose a location. Until Mr. Peabody readies, that location gets minus one shroud and gains a passageway. Oh, so, can't, so that's I, how you make that's this. That's how we make this, you make this passageway. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I, I see, I see, I see. We're yeah. getting there, we're getting there. And this says while an enemy is moving, it's so enemies can get us in here. Yeah. That's why I think, Yeah, right? okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so I will exhaust the ally, then we can let Rob get in there. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this doesn't have passageway by default. I do not have charisma. <laughs> we got it. Okay. Yeah, we got there eventually. Sorry, you're looking Thank at you, that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Are you good with yours? You read your... Yeah, I guess. Okay. Sent into Magus. Surge. Revelation. If you have at least three horror on, you lose one action. I currently do have three horror on me, so I will lose an action. And this is going to gain Surge. That's frustrating. Ah! Dan. He was messing with me. The locked door. I'm going to attach this to my location. So now mm -hmm. we have to break it down to get those two clues. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll just else. come up there or something. Okay. And I have one well, less action. Uh, you Maybe could I should use do... this guy. Oh, but it costs an action. Come yeah, on. but I, I'm just going to actually do this. I need to remember that I have one less action. Okay. Uh, so who's going first? Uh, Me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just going to spend two actions to discard this from my hand because I wouldn't be able to trigger my oh, yeah. reading an asset ability on my character and or fire axe and stuff and who knows what else. So this was stopping me from doing free actions. So I'm just going to spend two actions to do that. And then for my last action, uh, I'm going to try this one here. The three... Uh, you know what? YOLO. Uh, oh, this is an action also. Duh. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'll just do a Duke. Oh, most clues is locked? Sorry, did I read that wrong? Oh, so it goes where I am. Oh, hold on, hold on. Attach the location with the most clues. Oh, yeah. I apologize. I apologize. So that changes a lot. I'm sorry. I thought it was just where I was. I should have read the whole thing. So mine's actually locked, so that my little bit. Can you break it down? I don't know. Because then I can get these two. Nope. Uh, for Jilly, nope. Not even close. Nope. All right. So in that case, just move to here. And done my turn. Go ahead. Okay. I am going to put shriveling into play for three for action one it's going to gain five charges because of my ability uh for free we're going to do this okay for free i'm going to actually place a doom is this nope that's an action not going to do that yet. We're just going to exhaust David in a resource. Two, we're still at. Okay. Then I will spend my last action because I only get two actions. I'm going to spend my last action using the last right of seeking um, to investigate here with five, six on two. Six on two. Yeah, there's some discussion, like everyone has their own, this is the way the game works, this is very common in lifestyle games that uh, have tons of erratas and restricted lists and things. Mm -hmm. uh, they're saying this guy, some are saying this guy takes up your companion slot, 
not an ally slot, but your companion slot, you can only have one companion, which I would have just done. Some say they do that, some say they don't when you get them in a scenario. Nobody's providing like where it tells us that in, oh, page 19, David which Espinoza. I can... Let's well, check the rules yeah. reference. I just, yeah, the same thing. I don't want to go either way uh, until someone proves uh, where it says the rules, but I'll just, uh, we're not going to rewind anything. I don't care that much, but uh, page 19 of the RRG. Which is fine. If I do have to discard them, I just lose that one resource. Which is what I assumed from the beginning that I would lose him. Yep, I thought so too. Oh, are you just referring to slots? If it's just slots, we understand how slots works regularly, but for anyone who's on the side that you ignore slots when you gain a story asset, if anyone knows where that is, uh, unless that's in this section. You're saying it's a lot, like a braid above spawn, that, that paragraph right here. If an investigator is at his or her slot limit for a type of asset and wishes to play or gain control of a different asset that would use that slot, the investigator must choose and discard other assets under his or her control simultaneously with the new asset entering the slot. Where does everyone get the idea who recommended? There are a few that were saying um, that during stories, though, you ignore that. Why, why, why do people think that uh, would this rule would be broken? Is there a different entry for that? I'm going to read spawn here. But it's not a spawn because they are being taken control of. Mm -hmm. so that's just spawn. Yeah, yeah. It would only be in slots. Yeah, no problem. I can, I can do is there, it. Is there like a... Um, in the FAQ? Is, was there an entry? Yeah, they've always been the rules, David. But remember, FFG hasn't updated this rules reference at all. This was literally... This is like October... 2016 printing that probably was finalized February 2016. Uh, many years have passed and they've come out with an FAQ. So has somebody seen in like an FAQ where they've got the idea that if you take a story asset, it doesn't take up a slot in the current scenario? Or do people just play that way because they felt that that's how the game should work? I don't remember who, who plays that way, but you, you must have seen that somewhere. So I, I'll get the FAQ open. We can go through it if we need to. But, oh, it was down. It was down. Uh... I think it's fine. I, I want to know going forward. I don't really care so much for this scenario. We'll just get rid of David and go. I'll go keep going. Way too hard. Right here, Yogi. Yogi says he doesn't take a slot when obtained from the scenario text. And then Kate says, yes, in future he's an ally slot. So Kate and Yogi, where is that in the FAQ? Is that an update? But then thing? Kate changed. Oh. Maybe then rereading it, yeah. When you gain an ally. No, oh, and, and, and Kate says oh. later, when you gain an ally from the scenario, it doesn't count against you for that scenario. And Yogi says, yeah. So Yogi and Kate. Is that like a FAQ thing or? Oh, not all scenario allies have the ally symbol. It's a companion symbol. Companion is the word, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Companion slot? Or no, it's, oh, it's ally, ally slot. slot. Yeah. Oh, well, that's confusing. Yeah, so that's what Yogi's saying. We're just confused because some of the scenario allies don't have the companion slot symbol on them. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. They purposely remove that icon. Oh, okay, so it's just an assumption that, in general, most of them don't have this symbol, but this one does. Yeah. And there's not an FAQ update on that regards to David. Okay, oh, perfect, perfect. It has an FAQ oh. entry here. 
FAQ version 1.3 rules reference page 19 slots. The last paragraph should read if playing or gaining control of an asset would put an investigator above his or her slot limit. Oh, she's making us wait in suspense here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's probably just that's what it says. Here, I can open the FAQ. I have it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For that type of asset, the investigator must choose and discard other assets under his or her control simultaneously. Okay. Oh, this is version 1.8. Rata. Campaign guide errata, rule book errata. Yeah, don't just assume because something is in the rules reference, it's correct. Because mm -hmm. for some reason, FFG in this situation, like, are still shipping core sets with rules that are, like, incorrect in them. And it bugs the hell out of me that they aren't printing new versions of the rules reference in the, in the, the, uh, the learn to play guide and stuff. Like, that, that's horrible. That, that's so lazy. And they just assume... You know, everyone's going to know there's a PDF online and go look up new rules and then remember all the different versions. That's just like a kick in the nuts to people who come later and buy into the game. Assume you're getting a more updated version, which is sad. But anyways. Bob also says if you check slots in the Arkham rules pop in. Oh, okay, okay. In here, it's is... on page two of the FAQ. I know, I'm just seeing, like, there's so much errata. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, so much errata. <laughs> it's like, man, it, it frustrates me so much. It frustrates me so much. And I understand in living card games, it happens, because new cards come out, they change rules, they break balancing. You know, when you're designing a game for, like, 10 years, you're going to, like, you know, things are going to come out that forget our rules and things, and they're going to mess with stuff. Oh, can't it's, predict the future. It's right above our heads here. Oh, right above our heads? Yeah, right here. Oh, slots? Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Rules reference, page 19 slots. The last paragraph should read, if playing or getting control of an asset would put investigator above his or her slot limit for that type of asset, the investigator must choose and discard other assets that are control simultaneously with new asset entering the slot. I'll discard David, no problem. So I did not gain that resource. I, no, I kept scrolling because I was like, I just kept seeing more errata and I was like, there's like all the errata and I bet it keeps going and going. It's just crazy. That's crazy. That's I also like still have away. the token in my hand that I drew. <laughs> so. Yeah, errata, four pages worth of errata. That will change my test by one. So I'm only at five. Five on three. Five on two, five on two. Oh man, peeked at it. Oh, okay. So then I lose the rest of my actions, but I don't have any anyways. Okay. Enemies, nope. Reset, Re reset, ready up cards, draw, annual dexterity. Uh, Gain a resource. Oh, there. Protest statue. When you would reveal a chaos token, spend one charge, reveal two instead oh, nice. of one. Okay, good, good, good. Might help us get the last few we need. Okay, uh, not adding a doom, right? Nope. And then and checking. David's gone, so, so it's only one. one. Yep. I get a peril revelation. You must either choose one, spend one clue, or take two damage. Um, I will take. A damage on Duke, a damage on me, and there we go. I got an enemy, a fanatic. He's going to spawn at the rev uh, oh. revealed location with the most clues. After he enters play, move one clue to him, and then when defeated, take control of the clues. So most clues will be here. Take one, and then it'll flip because of that. Yeah. I just uh, did Peter Sylvester. I think yep. I forgot to uh, get rid of his horror. I did that in my turn. And we can kind of just leave him there. I mean, he will hold. A... He's not going to take any more of the clues. He'll just have one doom on him. But if we can try to get the other it's faster. All right. Uh, who is going first? Um. Well, and I want to check this and get the last one revealed. I need to. Oh, that's too bad. I need to get 
this back in my hand, play it. I don't How know much more do you need to put on this? One, which is fine. I can do that my, on my turn. But you go ahead because All I don't right, really so know. I'm just going to, uh, I'll use Duke. Uh, I'm going to do the whole investigate thing, actually. First action, I'll increase my uh, investigation by two. I'm going to use the Duke uh, moving into your thing to investigate. Uh, historical society, the reading room, which is not a passageway. Oh, five. <laughs> uh, it's only going to get one clue on it. Uh, investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, choose an enemy with doom on it. Take one of that enemy's doom, flip it to the clue side, and place it on your investigator. Group limit once per round. The heck? That's that investigate, so it's not the same that I just did. But you still can get this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can still get that oh, okay, one. Okay. So I'm coming in with a six. Uh, six on five. Ugh. Minus one. Wow. Okay. Wow. I did not expect to <laughs> succeed on that one. Uh, okay. We're at two out of six that we need. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to succeed again, but I could. Yeah, I'll just toss a card. We'll do the same thing already up Duke. I'll go in at it again. Six on five. Uh, oh, no, no. It's oh, not Oh, now you Duke. have to do yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Nope. Um, I just moved in. That was the only thing I... Oh, I did this. So... I have a way of so hot on that. So I'm out. I'll just go back to the middle here and I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. Well, let's do the last of this one. Let's exhaust shriveling. Place a, a charge on here. Uh, okay. So now I do not have to take a trauma because I have, when the game ends, if Angered Spirits has fewer than four, it has four. We're good. Uh, okay. Can't do this now because of that. But let's actually for free get this back yeah, in yeah. my hands. Press for it. It's action one. Nope, that's free. That's free. I haven't done anything. I could just do I could just two two resources and play it. And then I'm there ready for next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. So yeah, let's get ready. we're gonna do re we two resources. So aggressively, like fast. Yeah, two resources, then I'm gonna spend all four my last action to play it, putting four charges on it. Uh, enemies done, right? Reset. Okay, ready up. Draw. Grit your teeth. Resource. Storm of spirits. Fight. Attack uses willpower instead of fight. If you succeed instead of its standard damage, this attack deals two damage to each patient. We'll read the other stuff if we need to gain a resource. Okay. Okay. Uh, no doom. We are at two, though. Get back. <laughs> Spawn an empty location. Retaliate. Uh, at the end of the missile phase, place a doom on this guy. Where are you going? I want to go here because it's like a really easy one to get clues from. And if I get those two up there, I'll feel like I've done four. That's more than enough of my Cause if you... load. But Yeah, because I'm going to try for these ones. I could put them here. Then I can go this way. I could put them here on the way. Yeah. And just do the same thing. Try to deal with them. Um, uh, okay. Oh, no. I got one, too. Not that one. Speaker of Carcosa. Spawn in an empty historical location and aloof. I could put him here. It doesn't matter. Oh. Well, at the end of the missile... No. You want to put him here. Here. Yeah. Right? But yeah. he'll start putting doom on him. If not. So, I, I don't know. It's like, I'm not going there. I mean, I think we guy. just have to rush anyway, so it's fine. Yep. I'm going to try to get these two and then move here to start trying to get these two. Okay. Or depending on if you can get... I don't All know. All right, so our turns? Yes. I'll just go. I'll move here. This guy will engage. Um... Actually... Before I move, should I do Encyclopedia? 
Or do I just go crazy with the fire axe? Or... Four fight. Duke's only in four. Uh... Would like to get up to the four. I'm trying to save up to the four for this so I can use it to not draw and fun stuff, but yeah, because we don't know what's going to happen when I we get know, to the library. I know, I'm hoping like I can do a cool play where it like helps us, but could use it for a fight. So, yeah, I'll say before I moved, I'll uh, use this as an action to buff my fight up. I think is a way. Or I just go nuts with Fire Axe, lose all my resources. Now, I'll, I'll say I use that Encyclopedia first to give me plus two fight. I'll move in. I only have one action left. We'll do a Duke. Fight this guy. Six on four. Hope it works out. Or I could evade him. Yeah, true. That's an option. Funny business. You have manual dexterity. It's just he has this doom. I know, on and we're and we're gonna flip soon because we have three. And we right might now. flip no matter what. Yeah. Because he keeps adding doom. So. And like, this guy will add. This guy will add doom. So I think we'll be. At yeah, I'm just gonna fight him. So uh, six on yeah. four. Minus one. We're good. See you, buddy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. I'll flip my. Thing. Here we go. Oh man, I don't. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking, I don't necessarily want to start with the red scene, but I think I just got to take my chances. If I lose the rest of my actions and I just don't get to move here. But if you get both those off in one shot, like. I know. Even I, if that's I mean, it, then sure. that's it. Okay. okay. Uh, is there anything I want to play for my hand? Yeah. Not yet. I only have one resource. No. You could draw cards first if you don't, don't think, think you're drawing to. a weakness. I don't remember what my other, my basic weakness is. Take resources. You just take resources. But then if yeah. I pass and I could have moved, I might yeah, be upset. I know. I, know. I think I just got to take my chances. Okay. All right. yep. Yeah, we're going to just spend yep, yep, one. Yep. Yeah, you just have other options. Yeah. We're going to investigate here. So we are investigating for five. Five on two. Let's put in. Two. Yeah, we're going to just do five on two. Doc says, well, I try to be productive-ish. Experienced one super minor inconvenience, so I've given up for the day. I hear there, you. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Okay, five on two. <laughs> Minus three. We got good. it. We're good. And I didn't yep. lose so my action, so I get both clues. clues. So we're at four now. Yep. And then I can use my other two actions to move, move. There. Because I can get the, I can at least get one clue it and then start. Passageway. And then I can start moving. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe yep, I yep. just go from here. Okay. When we have, if I can get one and yep. you can get one, yep, yep, we yep. can do it. Next turn. But I think I need to start next turn. Oh, this is the cheap one, the exhaust and ally one. Yeah. Oh, oh but if I that. exhaust him, then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So you have to try the four. Uh, yeah, I could try the four with. Yeah, I could try with this, but I'm still. I know. I'd have, to put, I'd have to put other stuff from my hand, which is possible. But we can try. Okay. We can try. Uh, enemies. Guys, uh, just chilling. Yeah, he does at the end this of the guy's missiles. Aloof. Okay. All right. Reset. Up. Draw a card. A waylay. Choose an exhausted non elite enemy at your location. Test the agility of X or X is at enemy's evade value. If you succeed, defeat the enemy. You don't gain a resource up to four. Bob, this is what you're looking for. Chemical transmutation. So three charges. Exhaust it to spend one charge. Test. Yeah, but you need but it I don't early because yeah. it gives you resources. Which... But I don't think I need it anymore. I might just yep. use it for the symbol now. One, four, five, six. Okay. okay. No doom. Uh, we are at two. On an empty historical site location. Okay. Oh, I got a hidden. Okay, end of the mythos phase. This guy will gain a doom. 
This guy is fine. Okay. We're at the four we're again, at the but four. we're not advancing yet, but no. it will advance. So I think we need to get in here ASAP. But yeah. No, no, I don't possible. think I don't think it's possible, but we'll try. Um I could go first. If I did the right of seeking, played some cards from my hand, I might be able to get these two clues. We'd have enough. I could exhaust him to make this a passageway, and then I could move in there. And if you get to a passageway, you'd be able to move in. Can you get to a passageway? Uh, I could if I engage this enemy, but I could also just move back to here. One, two, and then three. I'm in. Okay, so do you want me to go first and we try? Everything yeah, has to yeah. align. I know, but... I know. Okay, so we're going to use right of seeking. So we're going to do an investigate on four. Right now I'm five. We're going to put in six, seven. Seven on four is up three. But we're doing five, six, seven, eight on four. Really want to succeed so we can do this. Eight on four. Uh oh. I think that's fine. It's just one because it's the highest number of doom on an enemy oh, in play. Okay, so, so it's one. Okay. Minus one. Didn't need to do all those, but that's fine. Does that end your turn or something? Yes. Oh no. It does. So that sucks. But. We at least have enough clues so you can get there. So then on the next turn. Plus, it, the game makes you move one off and stuff. <sighs> but I, we'll I can't see. get there right now because you didn't exhaust this to make this a passageway. No, I know, but if you get there, then you're already there for next turn. Get where? I get to a passageway oh, okay. for next turn. Like, I'm on one if you get to one. That's the end of my turn. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm going to go try to deal with this guy. Okay, it was close. It wasn't that one, but it did end my turn, so that did suck. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we have to get to the library. Oh, to advance. Oh, which is that one? Okay. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought this library, oh, but no. no. Okay. okay. Possible I could stop it from advancing, maybe. One? Let me go Cyclopedia, fight. I mean, I feel like we're doing okay. Here for fight, play. Only a three, doesn't get any bonuses. Three. Three. Yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. Encyclopedia plus fight. Uh, I'll move in. Gives like one chance. That's the right way. Maybe we just let it advance. It'll remove all the doom, which will also help for maybe some things. No. I don't know. No. no. For the right way to think. Come <laughs> on. Uh, yeah, I'll just try. Okay, I'll move in. He'll engage me. Then I'll duke it. So it's a six. On three. Six on three with a duke. Minus one. We're good. Guys gone. No tokens, buddy. Okay. And I'm done. Sitting on passageway. So now unless we get a treachery. Enemies. That's good. Loof, aloof. But All this right. one is oh end, end, end. Reset. Ready up. 
Draw a card. A lucky. Lucky. Okay, you guys know what lucky is. All right, uh, resource. Not a gaze. This is good. Good. I have seven Maybe. cards in hand. One, two, three, four, five. We check the doom. We're good. We don't add any. I draw a card. Nope. The secret card? It's a hidden. All right. Okay. Okay, so I got a peril revelation. You must either choose one, spend one clue, or take two damage. We're going to take two damage. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's very bad, but we're going to do it. So we're going to go to three damage out of six. I'll put it on my friend here. All right. We cannot lose him. Uh, end of mythos phase. Yep. Doom on, Doom here. on here. Doom, Doom on, on there. Doom on there. Okay. All right. So we're likely advancing. But You're that's going it. first. Go. I'm going first. So for first action, we will make... Make the hidden library the hidden, a passageway. Yes, that's action one. Into the library. Yeah, but I just want to put something in play first, just in case. Grotesque stone. Mm. Just in case we have to pull put tokens some on and it. something, and we get five charges on this one. Two, four, but plus one for my ability. Okay, then I will now. We can move here, right? So while. Yep. For you sure. Move in? Yes. Okay, perfect. Oh, the hidden library. Four shroud, six clues. When an enemy is moving, hidden library gains a passageway trait. Uh, the space was a small reading room, carpeted with cobwebs and dust, filled bookshelves lined the walls, but a few books lay scattered on the floor, as though their readers had abandoned them in a hurry. Lisa Farrell, the investigators of Arkham. This is a victory of two. Okay, so six clues off here. That sucks. Well, my right can get rid of two at a time. So I that's know. I did helpful. have cards that do that too, but no, that's okay. I just that's okay. Again. Um, and that would be the end of no. You need to be there too. Oh yeah, that's right. So that's end of Let my turn. That's right. Sorry. Only investigators. Yes. Okay. Yep. My turn. Yep. Uh, I'm moving. From, it says for the whole turn or something. Oh, it just gains. Yeah, it, it just so gains. Done. It. So you're gonna give it to like. This location, that location. Choose location until he readies, yeah. Oh, until he readies. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, I'll move into here. Actually, duke it. The four shroud. Oh yeah, yeah, and try to get some of the clues off it. Yeah, let's try, whatever. Uh, last encyclopedia of two on investigate. Uh, we'll duke, which will let me move beforehand, go into here. I'm um, testing six on uh, four. Hold on, you're testing investigation. Six on four, investigation. Uh, I'll give you one. Doom, oh. which is two minus two. Oh, you would have had it. So anyway. I would have had, had it. Okay. All right, so I get one. I just really want the victory points. <laughs> yep, same. Uh, all right, I'm going to toss away a card, I think. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'll toss away a fight or flight. Ready a duke. I'll duke it again for six on four. For this one. Minus, Minus two, two again. Yep. We're good. Take a clue. All right, I'm done. Oh, uh, as a group, we can do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not an action. Yeah, I should have done already, but it's fine. I'm going to do it now. We probably still need them anyway, so I'm spending four. Yeah, I'll spend two. All right, uh, the clasp. As you study the hidden library, you find a few pieces of information that stand out. As with the recent production, the previous performance of The King in Yellow came to Arkham from overseas and was performed by a French acting trope. You don't recognize any of the cast members' names, and of course, the actor who played the role of the stranger is anonymous. However... It seems that a member of the Historical Society has done some work for you. Uh, there are several old newspaper clippings gathered together along with information about the play. Headlines include, Cedar Playhouse Closes Due to Fire, Experts Baffled Over Freak Floods, and the like. Hidden amongst this information, you also find a strange object, a clasp of onyx with an alien inscription. The investigators must decide to choose one. Option one. This is an important discovery. We should take it. It gets us to resolution one. Oh, this oh, ends this it. Oh, this ends it? The whole thing ends it? Or option two. 
It's just a silly trinket, and it would be wrong to steal from the Historical Society, leave it behind, which is Resolution 2. So, because... And uh, this bugs me. This really bugs me that this has Victory 2 on it. And the, the obviously the game tells you advance, 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 right? So the fact that I got two clues forgetting about this, really what you want to do is... Not advance. Yeah, because you're supposed to assume that this is not going to end it. But it, it usually does. So being stupid, I went ahead and said, let's do this now. When really we should have just taken another turn to clear this off. Mm -hmm. That bugs me. That so bugs me. So what I'm going to do is rule it that we're going to continue and take more turns if you're okay with that. Sure. And we're going to keep getting clues off that because that, I, I don't, I'm not a fan. Not a fan at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. All right. So, so let's then continue. put our clues back. Yeah, definitely put your clues back. Ew. I'm not even going to read that, that uh, item. One, two, three. Four. I had four, right? Yeah. You had four? Okay, let's yeah. continue. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. Tixie Baxies that. That, a no thank you. I should know that it's going to have a resolution most likely on the back of that anyway, but I didn't even think that this was the last card in the deck when I, I just grab it, but I should have stopped. Yeah. But yeah, I'm hitting the rewind button on that one. That bugs me. Like, uh, Yeah, it's put the, that I know on it's the funny, last like, it's like Yeah, it's like, I understand, like, you should kind of assume, and then it's like kind of like an escape button. It's yeah, because like, it gives you enough. Yeah, so... This gives you enough if you're really having trouble yeah, here. Yeah. I understand why they do that, but it bugs me that I was just dumb and I went, oh, let me just do it now and flip it. Oh, wait, that's going to end the scenario. Whoops. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to continue to try this. It might be bad because it's still a risk because we have enough doom that this is going to advance. And it may, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what's... We'll, we'll find out. We could have a boss monster come on this location and say, you can't investigate. Well, this guy's alive mm -hmm. and he has 14 health. I don't know. It's a risk. It's a risk. But we still can just escape. So, uh, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. You're done. Yep. Enemies. Uh, nothing. They're nope. aloof. All right. Uh, reset. Yep. Ready? ready, ready. Draw a card. All right, I got another fire axe. Uh, it has a fight on it. It's probably... Yeah, I'm going to keep the Fire Axe and get rid of Waylay just to discard down. I get a oh, resource. Oh, you have that many cards? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can have eight. I can have eight? Yep, yep. I double-checked. One, cause... two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah, eight. Oh. What? I think I just realized something. What did I do last turn? Did I use Ready Duke? Yeah, could you not have? Oh, uh, nope. nope. Okay, nope, nope. don't show, but just put the clue back. Yeah, but like gain, I don't know. But I did like a whole turn I couldn't have done because I have this stupid card in hand. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot about this in my hand. Oh no, wait, this is different. I'm not looking at. It. I don't care. <laughs> uh, this is secretly added to your hand. You cannot commit skill cards to skill tests. Oh, you didn't do that. Okay, so I'm still yeah, good. You didn't I do thought that. it was a different one. I put a card in. I didn't even read this. <laughs> I didn't realize they can be different yeah, with the yeah. same art. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, forget that. <laughs> all right never mind i'm good everything's good we're all good thank you thank you uh, all right we're all good so i can have eight including this crappy card all right yeah sweet. i have one of those too but i haven't all right so we're I'm... not ending doom but then we're going to advance it so all this yeah. stuff clears away right yep oath breaking the front door of the manor opens letting in a howl of chill wind and the pitter patter of soft rain then it suddenly slams shut you find a place to hide and eavesdrop, wondering who else might have entered the building this late. No, I swear, I swear, I don't know where the door is, a man cries out. You'll have to find the path on your own. I cannot help you. He sounds panicked and disoriented. You spoke the oath, a man's voice responds. You spoke his name, the man stammers. No, no, I cannot, I will not. Then his voice becomes distorted and speaks no more. You hear footsteps on the staircase, heavy and wet. Spawn, the set-aside, possessed, oath-speaker enemy in the entry hall. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god. Yeah, here. Oh man, I I was joking, but man. So 10 health, because it's 5 per investigator, 4 and a 3. Monster ser Servitor Elite, Hunter Retaliate. Cannot be damaged during Act 1 or 2. So we're in Act 3, we're good there. Uh, forced. At the beginning of the enemy phase, the investigators must either ready possessed Oath Speaker or place one Doom on it. Objective. If possessed oath speakers defeated, resolution three. 
He's a victory too, also. I don't think we're beating this guy. No. He's at the entry hall, though. He's a hunter, so he's going to come towards us. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll but get I think there. we might be able to get these clues fast enough. Yeah. Closest way. The closest way he can go is this way to here. Yeah. So he's literally one, two in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, check the campaign log. If Sebastian Moreau is not listed under VIP slain. It's not. Oh, VIP slain. VIP okay. slain. Nope. Okay. Uh, search the collection for Sebastian Moreau, Savage Hysteria, and spawn him in the entry hall. Yeah, in our collection upstairs. Uh, okay, so we'll be right back. We're going to go grab that from our collection. And we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Let's uh, let's op open up the collection. Uh, so I did put little furniture pads on the on the corners for those that were following. So it's, it doesn't slam as much, but uh, we are grabbing. So where's that guy? He's in like a previous scenario. What's this called? He is a Sebastian Moreau Savage Hysteria. So I think he was like in that last scenario with all the enemies, right? Yeah, he's one of those that was changing. That flipped, probably. Sebastian Moreau. With that stuff, though. Like on the back of, like, locations or something. Where were those? Oh, the sickening realities, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. This one, right? I had a feeling this was going to come 353, three, Hunter retaliates. Sebastian Moreau's attacks cannot be canceled. Victory zero. All right. So we'll throw that back in there. Yeah. Oh, stick nothing on the bottom because it. Oh, shouldn't stick. I don't really know where this guy was. He fell off the bottom. Sorry, what? He fell off. Uh, he was here. Okay. okay. This guy's here. Perfect. Yeah, there's a video. Uh, we did a live stream, Cinegamer, of that uh, storage box. Uh, it's from E-Raptor. Um, yeah. The live stream was like two weeks ago, I think. You can find it on the channel. Or the E-Raptor stuff, if you're curious. We built it like live on stream with everybody. Uh, it was fun. Definitely a cool box. I'll be doing sure. a, a video, so a follow-up to that. Uh, the one box we have like that that was had a broken corner from shipping. Uh, they said they're going to send a replacement. I don't know if that's a replacement part or a replacement of the whole box. Uh, either way, I'll do like a follow-up stream where I'll, I'll, I'll show those. We'll actually build it on like a video 
Uh, I'll do like a more condensed video that you can see it uh, put together and everything. And then I'll show that one already built and the other one. And they're supposedly making smaller boxes, even smaller than that. And some of those might be coming soon too. So uh, yeah, more cards, card storage options. And if they're smaller than that, that may mean you can possibly keep like just portable, you know, the cards you only need to take the game night or, oh, you yeah. know, just, just a you know specific, I don't know, whatever in your game, like a faction you know, or, or like your, one cycle, or a cycle, or all your enemy cards, or whatever. Whatever. I don't know how small it is, but we'll find out. But anyway. uh, so this guy's going to play here. Is there anything on the back of that card that brought him uh, in? Just spawn him at the entry hall. That's it. Okay. So enemies, enemies. Okay. Uh, drawing a card from here now? Uh, yeah, do we want to look this? We didn't read that already, did we? I, I have don't no know. idea. I can't even remember. Uh, so the last, Agenda 3, Secrets Better Left Hidden. Whoever these people are, they must be involved with the conspiracy behind the King in Yellow. You can't let them find whatever it is they're looking for. Do not add Doom to this agenda during the Mythos phase. Forced. After one or more clues is placed on an enemy in play, flip those clues to their Doom side. This is six, uh, Doom, because it's three per investigator. We have a little more time on this, but not much more. But I don't think we worry about the enemies. Let's I agree. just try to get that. That's three yeah. so, entry points. So they are both hunters. So they we will like one two turns. and two, and they'll be there. So I don't know if we have enough turns to get this all off and then run. Well, it's not an action once we have. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I drew a card. Did I draw a card? No, you made me read this. All right. Drawing a card. All right, reveal location with the most clues. Oh. Uh, this has four on it. So like I said, things are going to interrupt that. And spawn, reveal location with the most clues. Force after answers play, move one clue from Fnatic's location to Fnatic. When you defeat him, take control. That's so, good, yeah. he helped us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, thanks buddy. So he's gonna flip that. Uh, he'll become engaged with, Does he have a... he's a three fight, only two health. I can fight by default for four. And I can, fight, I can fight for five. So do you want to take this guy? Sure. Yeah. Kind of yep. one yep, punch him. It doesn't end your turn, him. right? Yep. If you do that. No. Okay. No. So you can become engaged with that guy. Draw another enemy, please. No, I did not. Oh no! Oh, place two doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Is he a cultist? Yeah. He yeah. Would be the put two doom cultist. on him. Oh, that's okay. good. If you fight him. And. Then... Uh. Or I could take him and evade him. Maybe. Hold on. I have fine. four No, I'll invade. just fight him. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search encounter deck. Okay. No, I'll just, it's fine, it's fine. It doesn't invade him, but then again, that is no, bad can... news for this if we want to wait two turns. Because I can do this, I can attack him first, and then I can do right, yep. hopefully, Yep. and then there'll only be one left, hopefully. You want to go first then? Yep, please. Okay, we're going to do a shriveling attack. Here, what I got. Uh, okay, so he's only a three. I'm hitting, I have five. Let's put one more in. So six on three. I'm up three. I'm looking at willpower. If... I can't help you. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I would like to, but I cannot. Okay. I think I'm also going to use the, use the, I think I want to use the grotesque stone and the grotesque stone. So for my two. Uh, yes. So when I would re reveal, spend one charge. So I will reveal two tokens instead of one for this. Six on three, and we're revealing two tokens. That's a pass. Oh, sorry. Uh, he engages me, no? Yeah, I drew him, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. engage him. My bad, my okay, bad. Okay, so let me put all my stuff back. No, no, no. Uh, isn't it the spawn rules, and then... Oh, yeah, and then we can yeah, choose yeah. that he spawns. I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he spawns at a location. I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Yeah, it just happens to be our location. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't take them. So let me take I think out that choose. minus three. I think we can choose. Okay, so that's that's why I did two. that. Why did I put all that stuff back? Okay. Yeah, if he didn't have spawn instructions, then you take him. Yep. But because he has spawn instructions, it overrides that. And then when he spawns there, now we deal with who he engages with. Yep. That's okay. how I did it, and that's why I assumed it works. But, uh, and yeah, I think that's right. So I know. Many rules. I, I know. Yeah, we're not, yeah. It's good that we're all, like, here to help each other. That's great. 
Okay, so I pulled, oh, wow. pulled two, but minus three is enough because I put the extra card in. So I was Ooh. three. On, I was six on three. So we got it. He's dead. Don't get horror or anything because it's nope, not, they're both, it was not a They were both numerical. Then I will do. Uh, do I want to do anything yes. first? No. We're going to do Rite of Seeking, suspend a charge. We're going to test five on, five on four, but I'm going to put another card in. So it's six on four. I'm going to spend a stone. Uh, oh, you're using Because I'm using willpower. And yeah, that still confuses me every time. So I'm going to, I use the grow test. I keep calling it a stone, but it's a statue because it looks like yep, a stone. Sure. But, it's made uh, of stone. It's made of stone. So we're pulling two tokens. And minus one. Okay, that, that'll be a pass. So we're good. I'll just choose that one. Minus one and minus one. So I'll choose minus one. So I get two. Two clues. Two clues. Boom. Doesn't end my turn. And there was no symbol. So that's so good. Do it again and get so the I'll last one. And then we run. Last statue. Using a stone. I don't think I have anything to put in. I do not. So we're just doing. I cannot a help you. Five on four. I but cannot I... commit skill cards to skill tests. <laughs> is how I feel. <laughs> okay. I know. I want to tell you what mine is too. But oh, you have one. I have one too. Um, I think they're kind of fun though. They're funny, but they're annoying. They're kind of yeah. Very annoying. They're kind of like the what are they, the insanes of Mansions of Madness, right? They're just weaknesses that are like also in your hand. <laughs> like you get weaknesses in play, weaknesses all over the place. Yeah. Like more weaknesses. Okay, so I'm only up by one, but we're drawing two tokens. Oh, I'm not going to choose that one. Minus two. I don't get it, but that's okay. End my turn. Oh, these guys at the end of the Mythos phase. Oh, did they? Did I they think end? they should have, right? Because yeah, because we because this advanced before, and then we drew cards, and then they would have got them again. No, 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 no. This advance, which cleared everything, which brought these guys into play. And we haven't had another turn since they've been in play. These guys at the end of the Mythos oh, phase. Oh, after we cleared them, then they would gain one. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right, because they, yeah, they cleared right. from the the you're flip right. of this. Yep. And then we draw cards, and then, and then that's the, the end, end of the Mythos phase, where they would get their tokens, right? Yeah, yeah you're right. It okay. doesn't change anything, but no. it's important, because it could end the game on us. Okay, well, fingers crossed, you're going to get this one. That's the end of my turn. Uh, I'm, how am I getting this one? You're supposed to get it. You didn't get it? I failed. Oh, I didn't even notice. Sorry. I was only up by one. Oh. I don't have anything to put in. I'm five on four. Even drawing two tokens, or a minus two in the bad one. Auto fail. Uh, well, hopefully I can do it. I mean, um, is this when you? Yeah. Here, so what I'll do, uh, I'll start my turn by just getting rid of this then. So I'll discard it. You can. It's the one that's stopping me from playing skill cards to help Mel or myself. My hand's loaded. Sorry, for free. For free, I just want to put this back in my hand. Okay. I think that might be. I guess that's fine. Sorry, that was free. Okay, so I'll discard that. I have one action left. Now I can do a dookity duke for an investigation of four. Oh, I don't even have any cards really. You have willpower cards at. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, I have good, willpower. Good, good. Okay, good. Uh, so I wanted to help you, but I can't. So, yeah. uh, so I'll throw in this one with a question mark at least. So I'm at a five on four. You have a lucky play, possibly, so. Five on four. Five on four. Come on. Get her done. <laughs> get her done. Minus, Minus two. two. Five on four, not enough. Nope, but for one oh, resource, yes. I feel unlucky today. <laughs> I love right? this card, yes. Fast. Play when you would fail a skill test. Get plus two. All yeah. right, so suck it. Scenario. Winner is you. Winner is me. So I take that off there. And then now we spend six. I'll spend three. I'll spend three. All right. So let's flip uh, or flip this card again. Boopity boop. And now yeah. here's the important part. Okay. So we must decide: should we take the what's it called? A clasp of black onyx. I'm I'm not going to look at it. Yeah. Or, no spoilers. Can we look at it? No spoilers. Can we look at it? I don't know the rules. Kate, Yogi. Well, maybe not Yogi. Yogi's not always right. <laughs> You're so rude. <laughs> oh, he's so mean. Just trolling. Uh, yeah, so here's the card. The class of Black Onyx. I know you set it aside. Technically, we could have read it when we were setting it up. But uh, the investigators must decide. It's either an important discovery. We should take it, which probably adds more crap to our deck, and it's probably a really cool card. 
or, yeah. or more crap to our bag, I mean. Yep. Or it's just a silly trinket, and it would be wrong to steal from the historical society. Leave it, leave it behind. I, I want to take it. Then a gamer says, yes, take it. I don't know the scenario, but I say take it. Or it says, you take it, you look at it. Oh, you... I always Yogi look always at looks them, at them. He always says I'm always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so if Yogi looks at them, then we're not supposed to look at them. So, okay. <laughs> uh, Don't take it as a trap. <laughs> I know. It probably is. I feel like it's a trap. The last one was a great, amazing card. Yeah. The Necro Comic Con. Yeah, the Necro Comic Con was amazing. The Necro Nomicon was uh, a great card. But it did but add... it put another one of these Elder Thing tokens in the bag, which constantly causes to fail so many tests later i remember the cheating in that just added two of them to the the whole dunwich playthrough i felt like it would have been so much easier if we didn't ha have cheated or took that card we would have never drawn the like minus four and yeah. if you fail do this and yeah yeah, it was, it was, yeah mm -hmm. that hurt a lot because there's likely gonna be other things that manipulate the bag as well and we're only halfway going into halfway oh so. yeah but we might do side scenarios and stuff too yeah. so we have a lot i mean i kind of want to take it because I'm hoping that the benefit outweighs you look glancing at it. I just see the cost. <laughs> I can see the cost. It's a one cost card. I don't even know what type of oh, card okay. it is, but I mean I'm fine to take it if we hope that the benefit outweighs yeah. the negative. All right. Let's take it. Let's take it. All right, so resolution one. Okay. All right. Uh, if no resolution was reached, each investigator was resigned or defeated. Nope. Oh, that would be resolution four. <laughs> okay, so resolution one. There are no coincidences when it comes to the king in yellow. There is no doubt in your mind that the object you found is important. You decide to take it with you before continuing your investigation. The last record you find related to the original production of the king in yellow was a psychiatric evaluation of one Daniel Chesterfield, a stagehand who lost his wits after the final show. Seems he was admitted to the asylum after the production ended. Perhaps he is still there. In your campaign log, record that you took the Onyx clasp. You took the Onyx clasp. Record that. And then mark one conviction. What do we have now? Two doubt and Two. one conviction? Yep. Uh, for the remainder of the campaign, one investigator must include the clasp of a black onyx weakness. Oh, oh, it's a bad thing. In his or her deck. This card does not count toward that investigator's deck size. Oh, it's a bad thing. We're too greedy. Yeah, it's a weakness. Item relic. While class of black onyx is in your hand, increase the cost of each other card in your hand by one. Oh, you can't even get rid of it. I guess, how do you discard it from your can't. Oh, but we need it obviously for something later. It says uh, it was neither Arabic nor Chinese, nor I found, nor as I found afterwards, did it belong to any human script. Gift unlocked for. Have to wear it. So <laughs> I, I don't know, resource wise, like you. Sorry, have things cost more. Yeah, increase the cost of each other card in your hand by one. I can take it. Sure. Yeah, because I have, have I have ways to make things, and I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. And then we may need to play it eventually. Oh, no, you can play it as an asset, right? Oh. Can you not? Yeah, you pay one to just put it into play. Oh, yeah, 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 I'll just take it. It's fine. Right? Otherwise, if you hold it and don't put it into play. It's clogging, yeah. I think, right? Because it's just an asset. Yeah. It doesn't take up a, a an ally or amulet or anything slot, right? Yeah, you just pay for one to basically, like, Shut it off, but yeah. okay. there might be it. stuff in future scenarios that it say if it's in play, this happens bad or good. But if it was in your hand, maybe it doesn't. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, this is gonna be messy. I bet. All right, back to the. It's called a gift unlooked for. Hmm. Unlocked? Is it? No. Oh, unlooked. unlooked. Oh, okay. Yeah, gift unlooked for. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't count towards your deck size. So we just okay. added an extra. Uh, each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display, which in this case is a three. Yeah, three again, each. Yeah, this is only one location that had two on it, and our one enemy that had victory one. So three each, 
If Sebastian Moreau, Savage Hysteria, is in the victory display, record his name in your campaign log under VIP mm -hmm. slain. He's not. Then remove all. Whoa. You're going to remove all Chaos, Tablet, and Elder Thing tokens from the bag, but then add two cultists to the bag. Oh, so we're just... We're just taking these two out and changing them for cultists. No cultists at all? No. Yeah, okay. We're just taking these yep. guys out, right. and we're putting in two cultists. And that's it. That's the end of that resolution, right? We did all that stuff? Yep. All right. Oh, Scrath says something to remember next week, which I won't. Uh, be here next week to remind us of the start <laughs> of the stream, because I won't remember it in a week from now. Uh, but something to remember, which symbol is in the bag? Okay, so, so we'll have... Hold on. So we have three skulls and yeah. two cultists. Yep. We gotta remember that's what's in the bag. Oh, one cult is not two? I thought it said two. So, resolution one, right? Yep. Okay, no, sorry. Yeah, remove all of them and then add two. Yep, add two. What do we do wrong? I'll see what's wrong there. You have three in one bag. Oops, all. Of these three symbols from the chaos bag, then add two of those tokens to chaos. Am I doing something wrong? Like I'm, I might be totally. I removed the two elder things. We didn't have any cultists, and we don't have any tablets. Okay. But they're saying we should have one cultist in the bag already. Maybe. We, do we pull you one have... out and leave it on the table or something? I don't know. I don't see one. Should we have one more? No, we're right. We're good. We're good. Just, okay. just go with yeah, what the Yeah, it got removed. Is. You're right. Okay. Yeah, we removed. Like, and maybe. Then, yeah. yeah, it just ends with two total. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. We're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're good. I think. Okay. Sorry, I thought I was like I don't know totally possible that I was all in right, this so you can throw those but... all back yeah. in. Um, I have two total in the bag, yes. So what we're going to do right now, actually... Uh, I want to modify the decks that are linked down in the video description before we get out of here. Uh, oh, one other thing. Uh, I saw some chat in the, uh, some chat discussion before about Christian Peterson and the whole FFG selling to Asmodee and becoming Asmodee North American and all that. It was like the, one of the worst decisions in modern tabletop gaming. Highly agree. There's benefits from that and negatives from that. I wish it never happened either. But it did. That's too bad. Uh, but there was talk about Christian Peterson or like maybe some way of FFG buying themselves out of the Asmodee thing like Plaid Hat did and getting themselves back. But then here's the problem. Plaid Hat had to lose all of their popular IPs uh, to Asmodee. Asmodee owns all their good stuff. And Plaid Hat was only allowed to keep the stuff that was not so great, uh, in my opinion, or probably in sales opinion. Uh, and in public opinion, but um, so I wouldn't want FFG to do that because they would probably lose all access to like a lot of the things they're good with, but uh, all the IPs they have access to. But then maybe they'd be forced to only work with non-IP stuff. I don't know. But if they would most likely lose access to Star Wars and Marvel, um, they would keep Arkham, I assume, still. But who knows? Maybe not. Maybe Asmodee has some legalese in there that they have given all that stuff away if they try to leave. Who knows? But that could be even a worst case scenario, like way worse. So don't don't wish for that if they're going to lose access to things like this, because that that could be a bad thing. Um, but there was talk about Christian Peterson or something buying the game center or something. I don't I don't know if that's true. But I went to FFG's website. And I don't know if everyone else uh, trying to go to FantasyFlightGames.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed this this morning when I was trying to download the campaign guide for Path to Carcosa to find out what the next scenario was called. Um, their website's down, fantasyflightgames.com. I can't get it to load. Uh, all morning, all morning, I haven't been able to go to it. And when I looked up, I remember there was a news article. Uh, I was able to find this archived page. But in the FFG News, uh, April 23rd, so two days two ago, days ago. Uh, they've now renamed the Fantasy Flight Game Center becomes 
Game Center. Uh, and the Fantasy Flight Game Center was never owned really by Fantasy Flight. It was actually a franchise thing, was outsourced or something. Um, even though Fantasy Flight still use it all the time, I think it was like co-owned or something like that. But uh, yeah, I can't click on this article. It goes nowhere because FFG's website is down. So if somebody knows anyone uh, at Fantasy Flight Games, uh, they need to let their IT people or at Asmodee, uh, they need to fix their website because uh, there's a problem. So yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but... Yeah, this morning I was like, let me just go on my usual Sunday morning. I'm going to open up the PDF and I'll just go get it from the website and read what the next scenario is called to make my thumbnail. And then it's like, oh, down. <laughs> okay, well, I have that PDF uh, downloaded on a different computer. Let me go find that. Uh, but yeah, it was like, uh, whoops. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure they'll figure it out tomorrow when they all show up to work on Monday. But uh, I was down from the UK too. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, there might already be troubles with Asmodee and FFG right now, uh, where they've <laughs> sold the website servers to pay for stuff, uh, and they're severing ties right now. Who knows? They're cutting network cables over there to break ties. Uh, anyways, just thought it was funny. But I do want to read that article, because that article may talk about what Kate was saying about, uh, I think it was Kate saying about the Christian Peterson thing, buying the FFG Center or something like that, or what? I don't know what you were saying, but, uh, or who was saying it, but uh, I want to know more. Uh, so you're going to add these to my deck upgrade. Yeah. What am I doing? Editing. All right. So we're changing Mel's deck. Yes. You're getting what? I'm getting Mr. Peabody. If I go to, hold on. There's a way to do this. So I keep forgetting campaign cards. Maybe. It looks like it's like a neutral. I don't know if they're in Maybe. character. It's a character. Oh, character. I see. Oh, campaign. Is this a campaign, campaign? card? I don't know. We'll find it eventually. Holy jeez. <laughs> Way to be intuitive. All right. Uh, oh. Mr. Peabody? Okay. Maybe I'm not supposed I, I might to have add? scroll back, back past it. Oh, you're not keeping it. No, oh, no, no. maybe it's done. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I think it would tell us at the end oh, of the scenario. Oh, yeah, it's one of these. I think it's just for... Yeah, it would tell us at the end of the scenario. So you don't, so get, you don't get Mr. Peabody. I'm only getting the, the class, class with the black the... on it. Okay, which is under campaign cards, campaign. Clasp of Black Onyx. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, which is a weakness. So that's added to your deck. Super. That's all, right? I didn't get anything yeah. or anything weird. Did I? Oh, because I think I took... Sure. I feel like I did, but maybe I didn't. I don't think so. I didn't grab any sleeves or anything, so yeah, no. Okay, so okay. we've sleeved that we're putting this in. Yeah, he's not added. Yeah, it would tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I would. Okay, so I'm going to save this one. So now if you click the link in the video description, it should be updated. And for those who are going to recommend upgrade paths in the comments below, uh, you can check the video description of this video. You can check both of our deck lists on ArkhamDB. You can copy them or clone them or whatever into your collection. Again, uh, just a refresher, we're still playing with the collection of two core sets, all of Dunwich Legacy, all of Path to Carcosa, RV Walter starter deck, Stella Clark starter deck, and... Curse of the Rogue and Carnival of Horrors uh, is all we have in the collection for the playthrough right now. Uh, we have more in the collection, but we're limiting our deck building list kind of like a kind of like a progression series. So if you want to go see what options are available, adjust your collection to this. You can clone our deck in. You can click the upgrade button, and you can kind of go through uh, what options are available uh, when you when you do the upgrade. So uh, we'll do that based on your suggestions next week. So once this stream is over, in the comment section, you can check it out on the last stream. I'll put instructions in a pin post. We have three XP each. Yeah, we do. So if you want to, uh, you actually have an extra, I think, or I do. Why? One? No, I do. Oh, you do. I yeah, because you only spent two. Yeah, I have a spare XP. So, so you have, I have four. Yeah, I have four XP for Ashkay and Pete. And, and I have Akachi three. has three XP. So if you have any recommendations, leave them down below in comments. Separate comments per investigator. If you already see a suggestion you like, just hit the thumbs up button. Vote on them. And this voting is open until about an hour and a half before the next stream uh, next Sunday. So we have a week. So if you're watching this at all within a week after it was posted, uh, go down in the comment section. Get involved. Like things. Comment if you don't like the comments. Uh, if you want us to just save our XP for a better card, bigger card or something later, Comment down below. People might vote on it. The quicker you get a comment down below, the more chance you'll have of eyeballs voting on it. Mm -hmm. 
or if you can uh, come back, you know, two hours plus before the next episode and you can vote on whatever's there if you want to wait um, and just vote before the episode gets started. Uh, an hour and a half before it gets started. Uh, but thank you everyone who does that and helps us uh, upgrade our decks as we go. It's very fun. Yes. I also didn't see the card I upgraded the other shriveling. I'm just looking to see where it was in my deck. Oh, it was like midway through. I probably wouldn't. You have to draw like 10 more cards to get it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not having. <laughs> yeah, Mel, you need the other yes, shriveling yes, in there. Yes. That seems like a pretty straightforward one. But again, somebody has to put that in the comments and then it has to get the most likes. So if somebody else wants to go in and trump that, put a different way to spend 3 XP for Akachi and if vote on it. It may get the most votes and you can trump that. We're okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's be crazy. We're good. Doesn't have to be the most efficient thing, but... Yeah, because uh, yeah, this, this not so hot shriveling, it definitely worked this scenario. It was fine. So... Yeah, yeah. I want to see that other one too. That's great. It gives it just, you like plus one willpower. It just, yeah, would it give me plus... Yeah. Yeah. But this Spirit Seeker, this is where it's at. I don't think I valued this enough. It depends. You got all the spells out early, so that helped it bounce them back, made sense. Yeah. But if you don't really see a lot of your spells, and they all sit when they were charges on them, you don't really need to bounce them back yeah. too much. Yeah. But Especially I, I with like that, that treachery. I mean, this combo that I had today seemed like it was really working. All righty. Uh, so, anything else we need to discuss? Oh, or spend we... two to replace the level three to a level five. Oh, <laughs> that's also oh, an interesting. I like you this. You can put both and see what people like. So when the stream's done, it takes like probably 15, 20 minutes, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending how long the stream is for YouTube to process it. Sometimes it's instant, like almost instant. And the comment section will open down below on this video. So for those who are hanging out here, uh, it may shoot you to the next one as soon as the stream ends, uh, the next episode next week, where you can set a reminder for that. But then you can jump back to the playlist uh, in the comment section or in the video description, the video description uh, of all these episodes, you'll find the playlist that contains all the episodes in the past and the ones I've scheduled in the future. You can set reminders on those ones, but you can also jump back and then in the comment section, uh, leave your recommendation. So if you want to hold on and wait, it might be available right after this. If you want to throw something like that suggestion in there, Strafe, uh, and see if people vote on it. I mean, it's an option. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool yeah, one. Yeah, definitely cool. But again, if I mean, it's the one sitting in the bottom of the deck the whole know. time, it's going to be like, damn it! I know. Uh, but yeah. He posted the link to the, uh, in the Discord for the article. Oh, ICV2 has info about the FFG Center. Okay. Oh, yeah, I read on that website sometimes. I forgot about checking there. And Keith, uh, she posted the article in the Discord. Hold on. Too. Let me see if I can get Discord open on this computer. Yeah. I had it working before. Uh, Yogi, I saw your message too about, um, I can exhaust more than one spell in a turn, I know, but I wanted to just use the shriveling because I didn't need it at the time, but I know, I definitely know I can do more than one in a turn for my, uh, weakness. So you got enough on the weakness, right? So you yes, I have, I have enough. I have four. Okay. Yeah, okay. I have enough. Yeah. Eight in. Arkham Horror, you know, it's probably oh. in the LCG playthrough. I feel like I'm really behind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Going every single channel all the time. Hey, do you know which one it's in? Which channel it's in? Water cooler, probably. We have a lot of, uh, it's water cooler, yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. Oh, there's some there nice we pictures go. in there. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> Just a few clicks and jumps and hops, and we're there. A, 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 little, bit of, a little bit of zoom in so we can hide some ads. That, look at that. Christian Peterson Company buys Fancy Flight Game Center from Asmodee. Man, I love Christian Peterson. Super friendly guy. I met him in person once. He's very nice. Uh... Game Center Inc., a new company formed by former Fantasy Play Game CEO Christian Peterson, has acquired Center Inc. I knew he started his own company after he left. There was some other technology thing he was pursuing in his retirement. Yeah, this is the older gentleman that we watched do the uh, like in-play report, right? Yeah, yeah. like way before, Wait, like before yeah. Andrew was doing them yes, and stuff. Yes, yes, okay. Um, 
yeah, he founded Fantasy Flight back in the late 90s. Used to, you know, go showing, um, what was like his first big game was the, the, the big giant space one. Twilight Imperium. Twilight Imperium uh, was the original like giant game. He was kind of like promoting, going to conventions. There's like lots of stories on it and, and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, he was did the first one. It was all, all him. And there's still people at FFG now that started the company with him. Uh, friends of his that are still there. Um, I believe they're still there. Uh, as acquired. That's crazy. So he must like still live in that area or something too, maybe, right? In Roseville? Uh, the Game Center was open in 2010. Larger and included a restaurant and retail operation. Yeah, it's a cool store. Like it's one of the coolest places. I I, I love the food staff there. The the menu is awesome. Uh, it's a great play space. I want to go there one time. Yeah, it's in my very life. cool. It's like it's like you walk in. There's like a little like eating area, but then I'm only there. I was only there during like Worlds, um, and they would people would be like practicing and playing there while eating, and then you you go in on your left. It's like the restaurant area, but on the right is like game store space as you walk through. So you're like in a game store that has a restaurant area and a cafe kind of thing. And then as you pass that, it opens up to a giant area with play space, tables and chairs everywhere. There's shelving with a um, a library where you can play games from, like used, like open copies of games, you know, like in some game stores, they have like a collection you can borrow from the library. Mm -hmm. They have that there. So you can just go and, you know, order some food, then go take out whatever game. There's like a thousand games there, I feel like, on those shelves. And you just play games with your friends on any night of the week, any day of the week. Uh, the staff are so friendly and so nice. Even during the hectic craziness of Worlds, they're still so freaking friendly mm. and so nice. It's, like, such an amazing place. No one's all bitchy. Like, when you go to Gen Con, like, the food staff or, like, at a convention, you know, they're upset. Like, it's, like, so busy and, like... You can tell they're frustrated. Yeah, they're and... frustrated. And, like, usually they're kind of, like, there's some rudeness there after a while as the day goes on. Yeah. Never experienced that ever there. It's crazy. Um, But, yeah, then... There's a side area, uh, so that's the game center, but then technically there's a room, I think, that's shared space between FFG's office areas uh, that has, like, double doors that open and multiple double doors that open into an even larger tournament space that has, like, a, uh, like a, a long desk, uh, or long uh, counter, a long counter, and behind that are computers and stuff where, like, the tournament organizers can run the tournaments, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just huge, huge gaming space. That also expands into an even bigger gaming space to run worlds and stuff. It's crazy. Really fun place to go. It's crazy. He's purchased that. Like weird. It's like he like missed it and want to get back into the gaming space. So it's like obviously he like probably didn't want to leave FFG, but selling it, he probably just didn't want to really like run the company anymore. Or like, I don't know. Maybe he was not getting along with Asthma Day and was like, I'm just out. You you can keep it. But then he still wants to get into be like a retail, a gaming retailer kind of. It's weird. Peterson is the principal investor and managing partner of Strange Stars LLC, the investment and holding company that owns acquiring company Games Games Center Inc. Founded Fantasy Play Games oh in 1995 and ran it until it merged with Asmodee in 2014. When then became CEO of Asmodee North America, left in 2018, so only four years. And then after Asmodee was acquired by A Partners, that's when uh, they began a major restructuring. Mm -hmm. Despite the devastation that COVID-19 has racked upon our world and on many tabletop game retailers, I strongly believe that our tabletop gaming community is eager to again share great gaming experiences face-to-face. Peterson said in a statement accompanying the announcement, we hope to make this destination even more amazing place in the future. Click the gallery for our 2017 visit. Perfect. Yeah, so here it is. So this is like the, the mat at the front door. Like as soon as you walk in on your right is like gaming products. There's more gaming products past the restaurant and the restaurant's on the left. But then even on the left, when you first walk in, there's like tons of tables to sit at and eat. Then people also use that as gaming space. Or the product on the shelves. This is obviously an older picture from like four ish years ago. And that this is like just past that store stuff. And then in the back left there, you see the double doors. Those those lead to 
even more gaming space. That's like all, a more than double the size of this. There's the other, that's the other room that's through the double doors. This is just like pure play space for tournament play, obviously. But they do open it up on even casual nights if the main area gets like kind of full. Uh, they can open up this sometimes to, to play in here also. That explains everything I was explaining earlier. I didn't realize there was pictures with it, mm -hmm. but that hopefully helps. So that is neat. That is neat. But yeah, it was like a different owner. Uh, I don't think FFG owned that gaming center, is how I was explained to it before. Uh, when I was there, somebody that worked at FFG was telling us that FFG doesn't actually own that space. They have to like book events with the owner that owned that place, and he just like was licensing the FFG name and logos and stuff, but it was like a franchisee kind of thing or something like that. But it was like a different owner that like owned it and ran the restaurants and the, you know, the play space and everything. Um, like on the books, it wasn't really an FFG owned place or something like that. And yeah, Pi Pay Partners is basically a hedge fund management company. Yeah, so they, they're just about getting money for their investors. They don't really care about, you know, they don't really care about the fans of the company or the, you know, the, that kind of thing. They, they want the customers to obviously buy things, but they will definitely be more cutthroat and cut things that aren't working. So that's why I think FFG is not just pumping out expansions all over the place because not all those expansions sell well. And I think it's why a lot of the games are kind of like a hold and wait. Because if it doesn't sell well, it's like why waste time and effort on something that's not making as much money as doing a full new game would. Is where I think they're realizing. Um, yeah. But who knows? Who knows? That's just my, my opinion from the other side. Uh, Jim's saying it's too early to quit. What now? Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. Sometimes we get, <laughs> sometimes we get some of our weekend back uh, from streaming. It's nice. It's, sometimes it's nice. Uh, yeah, it's not even 2 p.m. here. We haven't even hit the three hour mark. No, that's, that's which in, in theory is how this game should run. Yeah, maybe I was trying to push it a little quick because when I saw nine locations in this and I knew we set some aside, uh, I was thinking this was going to take a very long time because I was assuming we would have to keep finding what we want to find and we may not even find it. Yeah. And then when I saw the, the other locations, the quiet halls were saying you need to have every location revealed. So then you can generate clues. I thought we would need to generate clues on those or else we'd be not able to win. Yeah, and then once I saw that monsters were stealing the clues from the locations, yeah. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. I thought it would never end. I thought we'd be here till like, you know, all hours playing this because uh, it was going to be a super long one. Uh, but it ended up doing okay. Yeah. Uncle says we owe them a super long one next one. What are next you talking weekend? about? <laughs> yeah, even yesterday's play, uh, the quick skirmish one ended like oh, way yeah, that early ended, too. Yeah, that ended like an hour and a half faster than yeah. likely. But yesterday was good because I wasn't feeling that well, so I was kind of happy that it ended a little early. And when I realized it was kicking in, I was like, and I was like, I'm done this turn. I was like, oh, ooh, I feel good about that actually. Yeah. It's normally a 60 minute scenario, says Yogi Bear. So two hours is about right. Yeah, with intro, yeah. And discussion, and everything. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. That's cool. Kate says, you both did really good getting clues and managing the enemies. That's good. Yeah, they, I still they, feel like... seemed to work this time. Yeah. It worked well. Our um, pulls were decent. We did get, at the beginning, I was a little nervous when you pulled the two reds. I was almost super tilted, almost super tilted, when I saw that the locked doors, oh, yeah, yeah. both of them came out. When I saw the first one come out, and it locked me out of a spot that had like three clues on it or whatever. It was actually four clues, I think. I was about to like lose my mind. Then I thought of getting rid of it, but then I knew almost every single scenario I feel like we played has had some stupid way that shuffles the discard pile back into the discard or back into the treachery deck. Uh, so then I was like, hmm, if I get this locked door off, I know it's going to come right back. I guarantee it. And sure enough, we saw that card that shuffled it back in. So I felt good about leaving the locked door on, but we still saw the second locked door come in. Uh, which landed on a three shroud, which kind of upset me a little bit. So that's why I just kind of went and tried to open locations because I thought if I have them all open, we can just generate clues on the middle locations. But there's still three shroud. But to generate the ones on the middle locations, you have to have zero clues on any of the outside. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Uh, oh, and there's no clue. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's if the monsters have sucked them all up. Yeah, exactly. I forgot about that part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But either way, I was thinking if we have them all revealed, it's an extra option to get clues if we need to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking that way. And I left the locked doors. I just said, screw them. I'm ignoring them and I'm going to leave them. And it worked out. 
Oh, we got a new subscriber, Chris Taylor. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Where's our alert? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know how to say that name. Uh, Andrej? Thank you for subscribing. Thank you, thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Uh, we are learning, and I, I think I said it in the playthrough number two of Carcosa, is that once we start a new deck, it takes us a little bit, like a couple plays, to get used to the combos and what we're looking for. But then once we do, we get the hang of it. I also forget every week when oh, on Sunday morning, I always say to Mel, like, I don't remember what happened at the end of last scenario. <laughs> yeah. Is it important? And sometimes I'll watch the end of our last stream to figure that out. But I sometimes forget my deck, like what I'm trying to do until I start drawing cards for Mulligan. I really need to like look through my deck before, I, like on Sunday morning before we stream after I update the cards in it. The Pallid Mask guy never came in either. Oh, yeah. Which is good. Is that good though? Should we have done more to try to defeat him? I don't know. I feel like we defeated him oh, twice in the last one, so I, I think it's okay about if him. it's like you want so many. But oh, yeah, no. he, never came, he never came into play. I forgot. Yeah, but you kind of want him to, right? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We have no idea. Don't spoil it. <laughs> but oh man, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Because that would have changed things too, right? Yep. Do I want to like try to draw more in my deck to find him? I don't know. But if he came out, that would have made this scenario harder, maybe because I would have wasted more turns and actions on that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I hate those uh, hidden cards that go to hand. That... I like them. But wasting two actions to get rid of them, oh. Uh... And Kate says, Rob, please read through your deck for my sanity at least. <laughs> I always plan to, Kate. This morning, I literally had no time to. Uh, I, I slept extra long on purpose to try to get over the, you know, side effects from the COVID shot. Uh, so I was trying to, I went to bed super early. I set an alarm late on purpose, knowing I would just give myself just enough time to read through the comments, update our decks, set up the stream, update the credits with our new producers. Thank you, everyone, for the support, of course. Uh, but yeah, I have to update that, you know, get all the lighting, everything set up for this scenario. Uh, there's other stuff that I'm not thinking of, mic tests and stuff. Yeah. But anyways, we literally were Plus like... eat and shower and your basic... Eating, yeah. Sometimes I do that before I stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all that stuff. I did it just in time so we could click the start on time. So it was good. I, I really thought yesterday I should have delayed the stream an hour, but it still all worked out. But yeah, this morning again, I didn't have enough time to go through the deck. I just quickly updated it and kept moving. Uh, but I should still look through it. But I know, Kate, I'm sorry. I still remember the cards. Once I, once I draw for Mulligan, I start realizing, like, oh, yeah. I remember the cards I'm looking for. I know what I'm trying to do. And, and you kind of, I find in this game, you don't really draw through your deck. And because the deck is only two of every card max, you're not going to see everything in a game. So you can't really plan for it. You kind of just got to go with what you draw. And maybe you want to spend a couple actions in a game drawing. But... I feel bad if you're doing that. You kind of just got to work with what you get anyway. Yeah. So it only really matters on mulligan. I think. And even then, you're only seeing, if you mulligan everything, you're only seeing 10 cards. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. So it, I, I don't know if it's that important to go through the whole deck and know what I should be, like, hoping to see during a playthrough. But I just work with what I draw. So I don't know. Because even hoping to see something, you might not see it anyways. Yeah, So it I doesn't know. matter. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the tutor in this game, the tutor that your your character has, is like the like look only at the top three cards, yeah, yeah, and then like put them to the bottom or draw whatever it is. That's not very great. Like that's not like search. That's not like those some games have. Like our Marvel Champions, I feel like has a few effects in that game where it's like search your whole deck for this type of card and do something. Obviously, those probably cost more. Yeah, or five cards or ten cards yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's search a lot more. Like, yeah. Uh, but in this game, it feels very restricted. Very restricted so far. Rob the Improvisator. Yeah, I find that playing a lot of different games, Velco, I, it's true. Um, I've just learned in games, like, not to worry, like, especially in games with, like, decks where, and, and I learned from tournament play, too, especially Game of Thrones, you have a 60-card deck, you could put up to three of every card in, uh, and in that game, the draw was two cards a turn, I think, I don't remember exactly, uh, but some games, it's, like, one card a turn, and there's not many draw effects, sometimes you get a couple cards a turn, there's draw effects, like, so if you're not going to be able to draw through most of your deck, or have three of in a deck where you're, like, most likely to see it, um, or larger mulligans where it's more than just five cards and stuff. Um, yeah, I find just uh, 
who cares about pl long-term planning? Just work on the fly with what's in front of you and make the best of it with small, efficient decisions. Like, kind of like problem solving, right? Problem solving, they say, like, break a large problem, you know, down into smaller problems and just focus on the little problems and, and eventually you'll get there. That's the way I kind of approach games. That's how I've, I've not to, to, to reduce the amount of stress of trying to figure out the overall plan. It's like, in this game too, it's like you try to stay with eye on the prize, but that's why I get frustrated when Mel says something like, oh, so next turn we'll just move, move, do this, and we'll get that done. And I go, well, no, 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 no. You have to hope that it's going to no, happen. There's so many things that are, are uh, have <laughs> randomness and variables and things out of your control that happened before that that, yeah. that could mess that up. So it's like, don't stress until it's literally your turn, and then you look at what you have, what's in play, and then make a, as best efficient decision as you can with what you have and, and just forget about you know what could happen and and hopefully all those better smaller in a uh, smaller efficient turns will lead to a better outcome in the end that's just the way i kind of look at it but mm -hmm. it might not be the best way to play all games but that's kind of how i usually approach mm -hmm. gaming now Tim says we need a nice quick game of heroes of land air and sea that we game. don't have that game, so we cannot. I help chose you with not that. to buy it. I don't think I'll ever own that game. But I would never say never. But even at like a discount of like forty percent, I chose not to buy it. I don't know. Just feel like it's not a great game for these times. But it does look awesome. All right. Uh, Rob to play Lola Hayes. Oh. Jizzy, thank you for thank the super you. chat. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thank you for the thank support. You. I have things flashing at me over here. Close them because it is annoying. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for that, Chizzy. Very sweet. Um, what's the chat saying before we go? <laughs> Look through your deck just before playing? Shocker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I always forget that's a thing. I try to keep things like uh, like blind in this game, and I do that even with my own deck, even though I should. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing it. My deck shouldn't be a surprise. But yeah. Oh, uh, funny. I have for Rob to play Lola Hayes. Bob and I keep bemoaning the cards you toss. Oh. <laughs> Is that bad? Like I should, I'm tossing bad, like bad ones to do it? You're tossing cards that they would have kept. Oh, you know why I, I, my, 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 you got, you want to know the reason why I toss certain cards? Uh, I look at cards that are single use and very situational as something I don't want to keep. Yeah, like expendable. They are very expendable. Yeah. So whatever card it was that I kept drawing, maybe fight or flight or something, um, I felt like I wasn't evading enemies too much in this because they seemed fightable, um, which is probably a bad way to approach it because there's usually an enemy that comes later that's very bad that you may want to evade. Uh, but that has no pips on the left side uh, to actually help you any other way. Yeah. Well, this card, uh, I immediately, I don't even need to read this. I just look at this and I don't see any way of it helping me uh, as during skills, during a test. Uh, that automatically makes the card not as good as other cards in my opinion. So this is a possible card. Unless I feel like fighting, I need more fight or agility in the round, which, it, I mean, in this case, it would be good, but I didn't have horror uh, really happening. So that was my, my reasoning for tossing those two. I don't know what else I tossed. Oh, waylay. I think I tossed waylay, or I thought of tossing it, um, because I was not really evading enemies. And this, this is, seems like a pain in the ass. Three cost, okay? Mm -hmm. So first, we have to have a non-elite enemy, which I get frustrated <laughs> that most enemies I'd want to do this with are elite. So non-elite enemies seem to be weenies. So I'm I have to a evade a weenie instead of just fighting it, which seems dumb in most cases, in my opinion. Uh, and then I have to spend three of my resources. Okay, so I've drawn this card one. I've pay, now uh, pay three resources. I now have to do a test, and my agility is the suck. So even with Pete, uh, my agility is four. I'm testing against X. So this of, of enemy that I'm trying to uh, evade, so I looked at a few in this scenario where like three evade. So I'm testing four on three. So that means I'm probably putting cards into this evade test on top of this as an expense. And I'm also hoping I succeed, which is not a guarantee. And maybe if that all happens and I've wasted all those cards and resources and actions, 
uh, maybe I defeat the enemy. And again, this doesn't work on elite enemies. So this card, in my mind, is a huge piece of garbage, which I will, in, and this is just from my point of view, you guys might maybe know playing scenarios and seeing enemies, and if with other cards, this is probably a great card. But to me, uh, I don't know, there'll be situations where I'll use this and I'll love it. But to me, I'm just reading this, and based on what I've seen so far, uh, this is a card to stand Duke. Or, or it's a card to get away from enemies. This makes the card actually decent. This makes the card decent, but this, this text makes me like throw up in my mouth a little bit. Because that I don't feel as great. That I don't feel as great. So that's why I would toss this card uh, if I feel like um, evading is not really important. Okay, so the, uh, that would have been a good card to unlock the door. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, there was a few times I was thinking about unlocking the door, but I also, in this scenario, wanted to reveal locations. So I thought, stay at the location, throw away a bunch of cards, possibly get rid of locked door, then try to investigate on a high shroud value, which I may fail at. So I don't really like this game when I get stuck at a location and I'm not getting anything done and I feel like I'm stuck in the mud turn after turn. And I saw this as a red flag as I'm going to get stuck in the mud. Yeah, and so just I, run. So I thought, let me spend some actions to get away from there. And in, in turn, I may find another spot that has lower shroud on it. Of course, I didn't really. It's funny to look at this, that these were all the high ones and these were all the low ones. Yeah. So I think I, I think I ran over here at some point yeah. and this flipped. Maybe this was you. I don't remember. I but... flipped the locked door, but you flipped the Yeah. The so I flipped this and I was like, okay, this is a better place to be at. But then yeah. a locked door happened. So it was like, yeah. So I just thought, okay, instead of getting stuck in the mud, wasting cards, actions, trying to get stuff and being stuck there. And we didn't have the little the little Peabody guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, ah, if Peabody comes back, maybe I'll worry about that locked door because... That locked door could come back. So I could remove the locked door and it could just come right back. So I thought, eh, I'll just leave. That was my theory. That was my theory. Is Lola really that bad? <laughs> I don't know. Is Lola that bad? I, I, don't, uh... I don't know. I know there was instructions at the beginning if you're playing her. Yeah, yeah. She's like, uh, the story like changes around her, I think. <laughs> Curious. Uh, Lola's a 3333. Three, three, three. I like the balance there. Uh, forced. After you draw your opening hand, choose a role. Survivor, Guardian, Seeker, Mystic, or no, is that Mystic? Rogue? Seeker, Rogue, Mystic, or Neutral. You can play, you can only play, commit, or trigger abilities on neutral cards or cards of your role. So for free, you can switch your role, limit once per round. This is like playing Keyforge, right? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. Keyforge rules. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like Keyforge. Uh, <laughs> I like that rule in Keyforge. So effect. So Elder sign effect plus two, you may switch roles. Perhaps this would be her big comeback. Six, six. I mean, the stats are okay, which... Could be annoying, but uh, yeah. So deck building option. Oh, a deck size of thirty-five. That's different, right? I don't know. Isn't it normally like thirty? Thirty. Yep. Oh, that's. Oh, she can cool have too. a few extra cards. Oh, okay. So deck building options: Survivor, Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, and Mystic cards, level zero to three. Neutral cards, zero to five. Deck building requirements: not count towards deck size. Two copies of imp improvisation. <laughs> Copies of Crisis Identity, one base week. Additional requirements. Your deck must include at least seven cards from each of the of oh. three different classes. Okay. This is their this is them testing. Is, was this released before Keyforge? Because they're testing Keyforge rules here. <laughs> this was a, a Keyforge yeah. rules test or a way to try to get Keyforge players to play Arkham Horror. Maybe. Am I wrong? Uh, You're I'm, not wrong. I, I think, think this is what's happening here. Uh, check her weakness. Oh, man. Is it on this page? Which one's her weakness? Yeah, I wish... Is there a way to cl just click to that? I wish there was. Uh, so, improvisation... Oh, crisis of identity, I'm assuming, is her weakness.
Revelation. Discard all cards you control of your current role. Whoa. <laughs> then discard the top card of your deck. Switch your role to the class of the discarded card. If the discarded card is a weakness, switch your role to neutral. That's kind of terrible if you build something up and then... Uh... Well, if they're trying to balance out the power of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see that. It's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yogi says, yeah, this is before Keyforge. Yeah. They're testing Keyforge here. That's what they're doing. They were, they were already designing Keyforge, I guarantee, and they're like, let's work it into another game. And see how how it works in the feedback. I bet. I guarantee it. This is copyright 2017. Keyforge was probably in the works for what two three years probably. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's my bet. And they've done that before. They've done that before where they've tested stuff in other LCGs while they were designing other LCGs. I know they've done that in the past. Uh, one example I know of uh, was in first edition of, of Game of Thrones. Uh, they were testing out big characters, like high expensive cost characters, and that whole centering the game around characters in the end of the last cycle of first edition in preparation for the way they were changing their design philosophy for Game of Thrones second edition, where you have the big eight and seven cost characters. I remember that was not a normal thing in the first edition. Characters were like, you know, three and four costs was the highest. Yeah. Um, and then, but then that last cycle brought this whole thing, and I forget what keyword it was or whatever, but they brought it in the last cycle to test it out and have people try it in, in the real world playing the game um, while they were working on the next one, which was kind of neat. But they've done it in other situations too. So, yeah, you can usually look back and find uh, when a game comes out, you can see they were like testing things in other games and learning from it before you even realized. Uh, it was out, which is kind of cool. You also get two copies of this card. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I know there's two of them in the deck, which is even worse. Uh, but your deck is a little bigger. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still really balancing it out, but uh, still pretty cool. I'm sure there's lots of crazy Lola decks on ArkhamDB. It seems really fun, like really creative. Like, I, 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 this is like a deck builder's dream, this character. So Kate, I know this is your favorite. <laughs> I know this is Kate's favorite character in well, the whole Kate, collection. Kate says Lola is not bad. People just build her wrong. Yeah. yeah. This, this is Kate's favorite character, guaranteed. Yeah. Favorite character in the whole game. <laughs> Calling it now. And if it isn't, she doesn't even know it yet, but it really is. <laughs> uh, this game, your card tosses were fine. Last game, there were a few you should have kept. Oh, I guarantee it. Oh. For sure. <laughs> for sure. So sometimes I'm also trying to play quickly and I'm thinking like, yeah, I might have a hand of like three or four amazing cards, but right now, if I were to get those clues off that location and advance the act deck, that card is not worth as much as it is as getting this scenario done faster or getting through the act deck uh, flipped quicker mm -hmm. before cards come off the treachery deck that take clues away or, you know, that kind of thing. So that's sometimes it's just like, those cards aren't worth as good as they are. It's better to just use them for getting uh, clues or fighting or whatever. Yeah, Lola seems cool. She does seem cool. But uh, as a newer player, I don't know if I want to <laughs> be doing that. But I think it's, a, it's cool that she exists for sure. Was she in our party of characters that they could have voted for? for yes, us to play? absolutely yeah? oh, okay. she was. Okay. But she's in Carcosa, right? She came in, or was she in Dunwich? Oh, no, she came in Carcosa, right? Yeah, she was in Carcosa. I did have her in the list, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I keep anybody out. Okay, nobody picked her. Yeah, they probably didn't want to torture us. Maybe, yeah. Or they didn't want to have to try to figure out deck upgrade paths in the comments, because that would make it more challenging, I'm, true, true. I'm assuming. The other thing is Lola being, uh, I know from other uh, living card games, anytime they give you like a neutral faction, a way to build from neutral cards only, obviously, uh, as same applies to any, any faction in the game or any investigator or whatever, usually as the card pool expands, you can build a better investigator. But because she's coming out very early still in the game, uh, I feel like the neutral card pool, it might be a little tougher. And there's probably cards that came out later that, that probably she'd pull from that would... I feel like make her deck better than maybe, you know, the difference between a Guardian deck at the same time and a Guardian deck later. I feel like, you know, she'd be pulling from better stuff later, but maybe they don't release that many neutral cards forward. I don't know, but 
Yeah, that's just something I would assume I'd want to play with a, an investigator like that uh, after the card pool expands a, a bunch more. That's the way I would look at it, but I could be wrong. But she works with this cycle, right? She's like right in the story. Yeah, but I think it's because right she's an story. actress. That's what... Uh... Uh, yeah, I don't know. But it feels like she's kind of meant to be played with the scenario like right away. Like if I, if I just opened this and we were playing at the time it was released... I probably would have grabbed her as one of the first ones to try. Yeah, if you saw that yeah, she had like, some oh, special she, roles or yeah, something. Yeah, she changes the story. We read some different things. Like, yeah. Who knows later on if it matters. True. Kate says, I've made a Lola deck. Haven't tried it yet. Matuj and I have plans to build a deck together. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh very nice. Build a deck together for one of you guys to play or for one of us to play? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're getting Lola next scenario. They're going to stuff the ballot box. That's fine. No, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, after you draw your first five cards, you have a 1 in 15 chance of drawing your weak right away. Oh, yeah, true. Wow. Uh, you just don't draw cards until you... I mean, just don't draw cards until you've done stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, no, don't do it to your last action of the turn. Yeah. Uh... Look at Calvin Wright. What do you think? Calvin Wright. And Kate says, to answer Mel, both we have plans. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. I'm excited. Whoa, look at this. So, Calvin's stats are amazing. The best stats <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, zero, 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 zero. Uh, yeah, that's just great. Uh, put, you know, kill me now. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. He does something here. Let's see. Cursed and a drifter. Where is he from? Forgotten Age. Forgotten Age. Uh-oh. Is that the next one? So he may be a possibility in the next playthrough? Maybe. Uh-oh. Uh Maybe. Please don't. Please don't do this to me. Uh, you get plus one willpower and plus one uh, investigation or, or intellect intellect for each horror on you. <gasps> oh, oh, so he's built up on the idea of building up horror. And it's on you. So I'm assuming it's only on this guy, not on your allies or whatever. Uh, and then you get plus one fight and plus one agility for each damage on you. Ugh. This is terrible. So he's like that mechanic you see in a lot of games where it's like, this is the guy that like, if you put him on the edge of defeat, he becomes like amazing. But it's like super risky. But he's going to be terrible in the beginning. Terrible. Yeah. Like and if you don't have enemies that are even doing anything to you. Yeah. Like they keep spawning at the other player's like spot. like he's useless. And yeah. Not your spot. So it's like, mm. oh, I don't know about that. And then what are you doing? Like, you're fighting enemies and, like, you're hoping they retaliate against you and hurt you? Like, I, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Uh, deck size 30, survivor cards, spirit level 0 to 3, new cards. I don't know. Oh, I mean, I'm sure there's a play here, but his stats are so low that it's scary. So, like, even if, like, the most you can put him at is, like, a 5-5. Five, five, yeah. But then all his stats are at 5, but he's one away from dying. So you definitely have to build his deck with, like, lots of ways to put damage and horror on other cards. But how long is it going to take for you to get the five damage and five horror on purpose? Like, yeah, you'd literally spend turns just not helping your team, just running to locations and going, uh, I got an enemy engaged with me. I'm not going to fight him unless he's retaliate. So I purposely hurt myself. And then I let him hit me with his, his, his uh, horror. But you can't always dictate if you're going to get hit. It's the bag. I know, so you just stay so you have there. To just hope you sometimes. stay there, yeah. and then each enemy phase is hitting you. Yeah, and then you just hope that after you have a certain amount of damage, you hit him and he, and he dies. You don't whiff. I mean, it's cool. It's cool as long as you see other allies and assets and stuff that you could put into play once you get to that point. But it's it's kind of like early game. You're just useless. Yeah, or other cards that you can put into play that buff your stats. Oh, you take trauma, so he gets better later in a campaign. I see, yeah, but in the beginning, it's still a little iffy. Yeah, but it's still, that takes how many scenarios is going to take for you to get enough, like, you're only going to get one damage or one horror on you. Yeah, attack of opportunity. Oh, attack of opportunity. Yeah, that's yep. smart. Yep, okay, yep, yep. yeah, yeah, there's a thing here. So he's, he's, you can quickly get him up to the point, but then there's that careful, careful spot of, like, you rush him up to, like, you know, Two away from death on, on both stats as quick as you can. 
And then something bad happens where you're forced to take a damage or something and yeah, then you're, or, you're dead. Yeah, or encounter cards put horror on you yeah. or something. And yeah. You, and you haven't drawn into your companions yet or got them into play, and it's too bad. Yeah. I mean, there's I'm sure there's a, a deck built here, but it looks scary at first. You would plan. just have to literally build your deck with tons of repeat like allies and assets that can take damage and horror and load your deck up with those. So even all game you're gonna be drawing like extras and duplicates, but you have to Oh, there are ways to hurt yourself. Okay. <laughs> it's cool. I like yeah. that it exists. That's a creative, creative character. That'd be a different playstyle, though. Wow. I do like the potential, though. He could get up to five on all of his stats. That that kind of has me excited. So he could be a five across the board. Like that would be amazing. Him running around, investigating, and all that stuff. But there are things in this game where, like, if you fail, take a damage. If you fail, take a horror. So, uh, I don't know, that's scary. Oh, Meat Cleaver does the pain, the, get, deals mm -hmm. the pain? Well, he also has... Oh, it deals pull, horror, right? I think when you use it? Yeah, if you pull his Elder Sign, you may either heal one damage or horror, or take one direct damage or one direct horror. <laughs> so you can give yourself... But I mean, I, we never seem to pull those tokens. Till the end of time. The other card we want to look at for his, his good card? Talent, Calvin right deck only. Direct damage and direct horror may be assigned to until the end of time. Oh, okay. So that's oh, the way. Oh, okay. In case you have the direct stuff come through and you've already filled yourself up. You have a this backup. Is a way, this is a way to still direct it to your buddies or this card, I guess. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, if you had direct come up when you're already at five on one stat, then it's like, oh, we lost. Yeah, Brian says it reminds me of Cthulhu Death May Die. The more damage and horror, the yes. better your character. Yes, yep. and there's a balance there, too, in yep. that game that it can get out of control very yep. quickly. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. It's definitely like that. This guy is just like the Cthulhu Death May Die, you know, yeah. mechanics yeah. and gameplay style. Cool, very cool. Very cool. I'm excited to try upcoming characters. Oh, yeah. see sure. how they work. And... There's even past ones we haven't even looked at yeah, yet that yeah. just that got, like... Uh, votes that almost won the, the, the polls to get in our playthroughs. True. Who knows what those combinations... Like, this game can feel so different based on, like, the different combinations of investigators, I'm sure. Uh, which I like a really... I think it's really neat. Really, really neat. Uh, all right. I don't know. I think we're good. Good. Anyways, that's going to be it for the episode. So, again, when it ends, check the comments down below. Vote on the upgrade path you'd like to see us take for next episode. Or suggest your own if you don't see one you like. Just leave it in separate comments for each suggestion per investigator. Feel free to give multiple comments for a single investigator. If you think you have two or three or four or whatever cool different paths to take for an investigator, throw all those options down there in comments. Let people vote on them. Vote on your own if you want to. Vote on others. Whatever. Uh, and we will go an hour and a half before the next episode. We'll go down to the comments section. We'll choose which upgrade paths based on which ones have the most thumbs up on the comments. And that's how we'll adjust our deck. So if you want to get involved, go down in the comment section and make that happen. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us here. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks to all those who support us on Patreon, who've joined the channel and become members. All the information about that stuff is down in the video description. If you're looking for our other Arkham Horror card game playthroughs, check the playlist links down in the video description. Also, you can check out the playlist section for any of our other game playthroughs, campaigns, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks all for watching and we'll see you in the next stream. Bye. Bye.